and Sabrina on Breeze 
Conversation now with Chris and Sabrina. Call 637-0094. Breeze 93.9 FM. Chris and Sabrina at 637-0094 on Breeze 93.9 FM.
Antes de um hum niga, Radzald and Malak is Fredzas, to rap in todo e me mu. A no gui distancia, como cupu gui palo. Zangi man malak kofi i konu na sugi ayri preba tula nuti na ipanderata gaigi pues. Atten fanny bandera Co is the pogwa puma la la pa Gilo tanu man libri Sentamiti man ko Happy, now I 
This is a compilation of words written down on the board of my dreams. This is a complicated line with too much rhyme and sound, it seems. But you seem to love when I love when I sing the troubles do. Troubles do seek to love when I love when I sing the troubles do the troubles do sing and why you gotta be so afraid when you know this feeling will never fade and so you gotta so you gotta hold me and never let me go scold me tell me that you love me so please me put me in your mighty grip squeeze me let the juices of our love drip hold me and never let me go scold me tell me that you love me so please me put me in your mighty grip squeeze me let the juices of our love drip down There is a hidden meaning in each strand that I can never understand to tell you. It's like there is this burning inside, thoughts are turning my mind to explain what I do. But you seem to love when I love when I sing the troubles do. The troubles do seek to love when I. Love when I sing the troubles do, the troubles do sing and why you gotta be so afraid when you know this feeling will never fade. And so you gotta, so you gotta hold me and never let me go scold me. Tell me that you love me, so please me. Put me in your mighty grip, squeeze me. Let the juices of my love drip. Hold me and never let me go. Scold me. Tell me that you love me, so please me. Put me in your mighty grip, squeeze me. Let the juices of my love drip down, down, baby. Dripping, slow down the time. The clock from ticking. Try to understand. It'll be a Superman if you continue to slip or reach as fast as I can. When you squeeze me, you please me. You try your best not to leave me. And when I see you with a thirst, so you know I'll be first in line. So let the juices of my love drip. Hold me. And good morning, Guam. Right on. Good morning. Yeah, wow, ha, hit me, Monday, ha, Lunas, yow, all right, let's uh, go. Well, somebody's got energy. Normally, you are not a Monday guy. Let's go, Lunas. Yeah, well, got to look on the bright side. It's a beautiful day out there, guys. It is, oh, man, ever since, like, oh, man. Five, 5.45. Dude, you see the pink? Yeah, the pinks, the oranges, the purples. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like God was making up for Monday. He's like, okay, I know, I know, I know, I know, my bad. The seventh day he rested. You got to go to work Monday. Here you go. He's like, let me just sprinkle a little bit of ease that Monday morning in. Yeah, you're in a chipper mood this morning. Uh, it's 626, Monday, June 7th. Welcome to the link. Thanks, guys. Good morning. Uh, Sabrina Salas Mantanani. Uh, she had to go to the States, attend to some family uh, matters. Yeah. 
kind of unresolved from her first uh, trip. And, you know, that's just the kind of hard worker she is. She came back. I mean, and now she's got to go back to kind of. And, you know, I mean, it, you know, it's wa- water under the bridge. So, pl- you know, if you, if, you ca- if you guys are the praying type, please keep uh, Bree's family in your prayers, of course. If you're the praying type. And, and we keep all of your families. I know some people were already putting some stuff yeah. uh, in, our, in our comments about um, stuff they're going through. So yeah. our thoughts and our prayers are with you guys. But, um, you know, I was telling Bree, I was like, you know, you might just want to stay out there the first time. Because I was like, what if, you know, things happen as life sometimes does and everything and, and you have to go back i mean yeah. that's, that's uh, i mean you know the, the cost of the airfare just the the travel the all the hoops you got to go through yeah yeah so uh brie will be joining us i think uh she's gonna be teleworking for a little bit from yeah. uh her uh, parents uh house but uh, as she's custom to do and everything yeah. like that she did document her experience of course so we, we, got, have we got that coming up yeah, that, that's actually interesting she said she left yesterday morning so on sunday morning here she said the flight heading to Honolulu was packed. Yeah, people are traveling, which normally would wait. Are are the are the Sunday morning flights to to Hawaii normally like really really crowded? I know Friday fr- the Friday and Saturday flights are normally like. I don't know, bro. I'm here. I've been here. Well, how, do, how when you <laughs> when you've gone to like the states to participate in like you know festivals, right, or, right, right, to visit family and uh-huh. stuff. Like, do you normally go through Japan or Hawaii? Uh, I think Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it's always crowded. But that was before the pandemic. But you know what? I bet you it hasn't been crowded. <laughs> uh, it is now, though. Yeah. Uh, we had a question in the comments, Jay, just right off the bat, about uh, what was it here? Good morning to our Facebook Live viewers, by the way. Uh, Dana Munia Castro comments in with a question. Quick question. Good morning. Do we have to get vaccinated before traveling? Help. Help! Three question marks. That's more of like help, right? Three question marks, Joe. Yeah, it's it's kind of like, and some people are like, okay, if I've not been vaccinated, do I need to? If I can't get vaccinated for for whatever reason, does that mean I can't travel? If I've got the first shot but not the second, what does that mean? Can I get the second out there? And and you know. Yeah, you don't need a vaccination to travel out out of Guam. Yeah. But coming back in, if you're not vaccinated, then you're gonna have to do the quarantine. At a five-star hotel. Yeah. Ah. Ah. With and they a give gorgeous you, view. Right. They give you bottled water. You get a bunch of meals. You're going to be able to boost your social media with the best um, sunrise and, well, sunset videos. Yeah. Right. You're going to be able to wake up with us in real time on the lake. Oh, uh, yeah. Hang out. It's not that bad. We'll keep not you company shabby. if you got to do six days, man. Plus, people are making money off it, so yeah. support the economy. Uh, it's 6.30. Speaking of which. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you were already gone for the day, but when the governor had her um, uh, her much ballyhooed <laughs> press conference on uh, on Friday in which she detailed, you know, the, um, what's what's the right way we can call it? Like lottery, sweepstakes, giveaways? Is there a, what is it? Oh, I want to make sure we get this right. Is it Vax and Win? Yeah. So if you go to uh, visitguam.org slash Vax, right? You can register, and, you know, I mean, it was all over all of our friends in the media. So, you know, we had it. We put it up on Facebook. We had it on our, on our show. Both papers had it. You can win $10,000 or a car if you get vaccinated and you register yourself. Right. And now, if you, now, of course, I, I'm, you know, I have a degree in marketing, so this kind of stuff, like, you know, completely, like, you know, curls my toes and everything, right? Right. And because I'm a data nerd, I wanted to see, okay, well, they came out with a really interesting concept. What has the response been um crystal paco sanagazine who is going to join us at 7 30 by the way she's going to talk about this very topic uh she was saying at the end of the press conference because you know they announced it about 2 10 2 15 in the afternoon um by the end of the press conference which was at about three ish yeah. there had already been 500 signups by 5 p.m end of close of business day just like less than two hours later they had 500 signups by saturday morning she messaged me over twelve thousand. 12,000 people have done that. And, and again, remember, I, I mean, I may be the minority voice here, but I've been the guy that's saying, been saying like the whole time, you need to dangle a carrot in front of a lot of people yeah. in, the, in this yeah. community to get them to do And there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's marketing theory 101. Yeah, except, you know, newsflash, we're not really into carrots here. Dangle money in cars? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a carrot we could probably work with. Yeah. Right, Joe? C- cash works. Yeah, so that's going to start uh, June sixteenth. They'll do the first drawing, and then they're running it all the way to liberation. Yeah, not not this not this coming Wednesday, but on successive Wednesdays they will be announcing like the a series right. of wins. Yep. So the website, Jay. Yeah, it's a uh, visitguam.org/vax. 
So uh, yeah, so that's 12, that's happening. 000. That's kind of happening, guys. 12,000 people registered. Great job, you guys. Right on. Um, so and honestly, that motiv- and, you know, for people wondering, I know a lot of people are saying, oh, is it only for like new vaccinated people? No, I mean, they got all the rules and regulations and the uh, stipulations and everything like that. I was actually messaging Crystal that night because, um, you know, Crystal like worked with us here uh, for many, many years, you know, always like a good friend and everything. And I was just like, I was like, hey, Friday night, um, you know, I think she was winding down and I was like, you know, I think you guys are doing like a really bang up job, you know, with this campaign and everything like that. Like, like good job. And she's, she's like, man, that was a lot of moving parts to get that to come together. Uh, yeah, they're doing it in the States. Yeah. So everybody's doing it. Uh, Have you heard about any, any other thing? Cause we, there's we like Vax a million. There's a, there's a state that's doing like a million dollar lottery. Well, and you said, sorry, sorry if you're excited about 10 grand. <laughs> and the, and the one you ke- the one you kept citing was West West Virginia is rifles and trucks. Rifles and trucks. That's right. They're giving away rifles and trucks. I'm wondering what you know, like in in my home state of Connecticut, what they're giving away up there. It's like up in Connecticut. Yeah. yeah. What what would they be giving away in Connecticut? Connecticut is like the chestnut state, and we we also have, like famously had you know like those door stoppers, like the little door jams. Oh yeah, so famous. In, yeah, in yeah, Hartford, yeah, the little door jams. Hartford Joe, was, who could forget the little door jams? No, Hartford was the world. Like we have the factory of where they make those, so wow. we supply those to the world. But other than that, I'm thinking like, okay, what? Um, you got to get your family to um, send us some bona fide Connecticut door stoppers. Yeah, so we, we can send you door stops. Yeah, we could. We could open the door and have an open door policy. We could give you maybe a. A hedge fund, maybe. Oh God! Because <laughs> you know, like a lot of the guys who work in Wall Street, they live up in Greenwich, which is across the bridge. Oh, in Connecticut. Uh, maybe we could give you tickets to a World Wrestling Entertainment event because the uh, headquarters is there in Bristol. Maybe the tickets to, to a ESPN. Whalers game. Is it hockey? Is the Whalers? We were the Whalers, and then oh. and then they, we didn't win. Oops. Jack. Okay. And then the Whalers left us, and then three years after the Whalers departed Connecticut, our only pro sports team, they went down to Carolina and they won the Stanley Cup. Speaking of which, you can watch playoff hockey on KUM TV 8. I was, wa- I was watching the Bruins and Islanders yesterday. Wow. Good game. All right. There's uh, Jason Solis with our morning tangent. Oh, wait uh, a minute. Talking Connecticut. What, one, one more. Jay, can you tell the people, give them a little context why you're talking about Connecticut? Because my mom's side of the family, we are from Connecticut. I used to live in Waterbury. Um, and you know what's funny is, you know, Dr. Felix Cabrera, the uh, chief medical officer for public health, he did his medical training. He went to Yale Med School, and we were, you know, we were just riffing one day in commercial break, and I was like, "Hey, Doc, you ever been through uh, Waterbury? Because that's where I used to live." And he actually said he did his, um, uh, he did his internship at the Waterbury Hospital, and he wow. said that really, he felt it really trained him and got him ready to be a. Uh, when did you live in Connecticut? When I was a baby. Oh. Because my par- my my parents met like at UConn. Okay. Right on. UConn women's basketball. Hello. Uh, that's Gino Jason Salas. Okay, wait. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So, so we're also forgetting something, right? Okay, then Link Fam, I, I need you know if you're, unfortunately, this only applies to you if you're Guamanian, right? Um, did you guys register for the vax thing, for the sweepstakes, for the lottery, for the giveaways? Well, Joe 12, sir did. If twelve thousand people did, I'm pretty sure some of them are on this stream. Okay, Joe sir did. You raise your hand if you registered, guys. You're, okay, Chris, your name is registered, but you did not <laughs> register. <You're, laughs> Your, your My girlfriend, girlfriend signed registered me up. Yeah. you. That's nice. Yeah, it is. Uh, guys, so yeah, it's $10,000. The couple that registers each other stays together. <laughs> right. But I mean, of course, obviously, I don't, if I did win, I mean, I only registered because whatever, you know, boost the Technically, numbers. Technically, you did yeah. not register. You, yeah, you but are in the registered, event but you I did win, not guys, I would donate um, it to charity. So there you go. There you go. I was actually thinking, okay, and now for, for me, I really wholeheartedly encourage... Wait, are we recording this? Yeah. We're recording? That's legally binding, oh, by the way. darn. I really encourage <laughs> everybody to please, please go register. Who couldn't use the money? I mean, absolutely, I could use the money, but I'm, I'm always a believer in, like, probability. And there are people in our community who could use it more than me. And if I just throw my name in there, um, I'm hurting other people's chances. So, I mean, I'm, I'm already fully vaccinated. I, you know, I did it of my own volition. Um, and yeah. I, I would just hope that, that somebody that really, really is struggling, um, would win. So I'm, I'm not going to register for the, for the giveaway just because I want somebody else. Oh, well, how noble of you, Jason. No, it's, you know, and again, and remember, I've shared He's this, a noble guy. No, He's the one in the money. I've shared this story before, right? When my late father, right? <laughs> when, when my late father ran for, um, 
uh, for the legislature, right, when he ran for senator. I got in line to vote. I went in there, and the ladies were, you know, really, really, you know, from the GEC, and they were like, oh, Nan, you know, this is how you vote. You fill up. I'm like, okay, auntie, I know how to vote. I went into the booth, circled only one name, and got the hell out. Because I was like, at that point, I wasn't doing what was best for the island. I was trying to make sure that my parents could pay their mortgage. Oh. And every other person I vote for probabilistically hurts my dad's chances. Of making yeah, it in, that's so. called bullet voting. Yeah, I so did that I, a couple years. So that was my mentality. So long story short, I really want you guys to, to register. Go visit guam.org slash vax again. And good luck to you. I really, really hope you come away with a new set of wheels. I hope you get a ride, a whip, whatever you want to refer to it. Get you a car at 10000 man. Pay get off you a bills. whip. There you go. Is that um, what the kids say? Let me tell you a cool story before we get into news. Because yes, you, you talked about you hope someone who really needs needs it wins. Yeah. You know, uh, in a previous life, I hosted uh, large gatherings and events. It was before the pandemic. Many moons ago. Many moons ago. Um, I'd also host these things called uh, raffle giveaways. Mm. They were big ones. They would be at the Micronesia Mall, and there would just be... Thousands of people on the balcony, anxious. The first floor, because they would yeah. do. They would give away these cars, and uh, I done the last. Cars too. Uh, yeah, I done the last like bunch of giveaways for them, and I gave away a car, and the people who won it was a Chamorro couple, which was crazy because for some reason it's usually always Filipinos that win the because I I think it's a, they're just ones that are entering right, Joe. Mm. Um, so it was a Chamorro couple, and they actually ran out of gas on the way to the drawing. Oh. Yeah, so they they ran out of gas. They walked, like, the rest of the way to the mall. And so when you talk about somebody who really deserves to win, I thought that was pretty pretty cool, pretty cool. That's a crazy story. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's 638. It's Monday, June 7th, 2021. The show is proudly brought to you by Pacific Points, IT&E, Jack in the Box, Cabo Enterprises. Good morning, 638, again, Sabrina Sauce Mantanani is uh, in the States attending to some family uh, matters. She'll be teleworking uh, starting tomorrow's show. And we do have a little uh, video log of her trip over uh, stateside, so we'll play that coming up in a little bit. But first, with the very latest from the KUA News team, Jason Solis, good morning. All right, good morning. Thank you, partner, and good morning, Guam. We are now, of course, officially a week, seven days into the sixth month of the year, and here is what's making news at home as we broke yesterday, the Guam Police Department is actively searching for a person of interest connected to yesterday's death investigation. Adriana Katera reported that the incident occurred at the Hotel Mayana over in Tamuning as a 39-year-old female was transported to the Guam Memorial Hospital, having sustained multiple lacerations and later pronounced dead by attending physicians at the Tamuning facility. Additionally, a female victim of 19 years was transported to the Guam Regional Medical City up here in Dedo for treatment and care. Now let's go back to the newsroom where our Tyler Matanani is standing by and she has a look at what's making other Island News headlines. Point of Zen Hoffa Day everyone, I'm Tyler Matanani with your headlines here on The Link. The government is offering a chance to win $10,000 cash or a brand new car just for getting vaccinated. Governor Leon Guerrero announced the incentive program Friday as part of her effort to reach an 80% COVID vaccination rate and herd immunity by July 21st. To show our thanks, our office, in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau, is proud to announce an incentive program we are calling Vax and Win for all our vaccinated Guam residents. Starting June 16 and every Wednesday leading up to Guam's liberation on July 21st, residents 18 years of age or older who received their COVID-19 vaccine on Guam are eligible to win either $10,000 in cash or a brand new car. To be clear, that means 10,000 cash and a different new car every week for six weeks, starting with the first drawing on June 16th. The goal is to entice those who still haven't been vaccinated, such as the single largest demographic, the Micronesian community. I just met with the Council General uh, Philippin, and she too is saying that she's seeing an increase in the uh, 
numbers of people vaccinated uh, in the Micronesian community. So far, a little less than 83,000 have been vaccinated. The goal is to reach herd immunity at 96,000. That means we need about 13,000 vaccinations by the July 21st Operation Liberate Guam deadline. I really still strongly believe that once we get there, we will return to uh, more of a normal uh, lifestyle. To register, go to the GVB website, visitguam.com slash VAX, VAX. Adloop says that within an hour of the announcement, more than 500 had already signed up. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Separately, the lieutenant governor announced there will be fireworks on Liberation Day and a first ever drone light show. The public weighed in Friday on the legislature's proposed spending plan for ARP funds. Funds. A hearing was held on a resolution that mirrors the priority list approved by the senators and was presented to the governor in a meeting at Adeloupe in May. The testimony by both private and public sector representatives was divided between those that believe the money should go mostly to direct public assistance and those that think it's better spent on lasting improvements and infrastructure that will provide benefits over the long run. You know, it's not only about government workers, about those People at the grocery, security guards, gas attendants, hardware store workers, pharmacy workers, restaurant workers, the media that they are working every day to uh, spread the news, you know, and other essential businesses that were told to open during the pandemic. Like, give them something. We believe that the $7 million, not only for heavy equipment, to, to continue to support and maintain the maintenance and the beautification of the villages, but also to actually go in and do a one-time cleanup, including the illegal dumping sites that most of the villages face. Private health care workers are tired too, and they need to know that the government appreciates everything they did for the community. Please add a provision in your resolution, however way you see fit, to include private clinics too. Co-sponsor Minority Leader Chris Duenas compared it to the Senator biblical Speaker, parable um, of I the fish and the fishermen. We have to, I think, have balance to our proposals going forward. Even if we set aside this entire $600 million, that would be one-fourth of what FPUC and PUA has been over the last two years. I want to give a fish, and I want to give a fishing pole. And fellow sponsor, Speaker Therese Terlaw, he says, it's a start. As I stated before, this $604 million in federal funds is an unprecedented amount of funding. It's close to the entire budget of the government of Guam. So this is just the beginning, but it's my goal to ensure that we work together, we collaborate to ensure that this process is transparent as possible. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. About 72% of the prison population has now been fully vaccinated with the single dose of Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine. Department of Corrections spokesperson Major Anton Uggen says that's a total of 400 of 557 inmates. We're as they educate the inmates and try to encourage them to uh, get vaccinated. Some, you know, some still are being resistant, but we are continuing to move forward. Again, previously told KOAM their goal is 85% or more prisoners to be vaccinated. He added that about 56% of DOC staff are fully vaccinated and they're working to increase the number. That's it for now. We'll see y'all at 6 tonight on Primetime. All right, everybody, and thanks so much, Tyler. After concerns arose about where villages begin and end during the last election, a committee has been established to address that very issue. Mayor's Council of Guam President Jesse Alec, who will be joining us at, at the top of the hour here on the link, said the newly embodied committee will identify village boundaries. Isaiah Uggen has more in this report. After concerns arose about where villages begin and end during the last election, a committee has been established to address that issue. Mayor's Council of Guam President Jesse Alex said the newly embodied committee will identify village boundaries during the monthly meeting held on Wednesday. So there's no final determination from the committee or from, you know, from the mayors, but it is, it's, it's, a, it's a guide as to where we want to go from there, where we want to proceed, or how we want to proceed. Because if there were going to be any changes or any proposal to change, of course that will have to go through the whole legislative process to amend that law. 
but uh, to map it out so that everyone knows, every mayor and vice mayor knows exactly where their boundaries are. The committee chair is Barragada Vice Mayor Jesse Bautista, who said there is a lot of work that needs to be done. The boundaries are very difficult to uh, uh, work with. Um, like Mr. Underwood, Dr. Underwood said, it's, we, we need to really study this. Um, mayor June has spoken to uh, um, Bureau of Statistics, and we, we are going to meet because it's, um, it's very complicated. We, we need to get into more details in this. The committee members include Barragot of Mayor June Bloss and Alahan Mayor Anthony Chargoloff, Dededo Vice Mayor Peter Benavenci, Manila Vice Mayor Kevin Delgado, Sinahania Vice Mayor Rudy Ariarte, Tatuja Vice Mayor Albert Tovez, Jigo Vice Mayor Loretto Leonis, with Agate Vice Mayor Christopher Ferharin as co-chair. Mayor June Bloss confirmed that a meeting will be held next Thursday, June 10th, with the Department of Land Management and the Bureau of Statistics to actually help identify the boundaries of villages across the island. More updates will be released at the next Mayor's Council meeting in July. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahusi Isaiah Uggen. In other news this morning, 34-year-old Joseph David Calvo Atalig was arrested and charged with criminal mischief as a third-degree felony and harassment as a petty misdemeanor. On June 3rd, Atalig became aggressive to a victim as a car was being repossessed down in Talafofo. Atalig allegedly told the victim to leave and said, quote, I will hit you. He then allegedly began damaging the car even as it was being secured by a tow truck. Isaiah's got our next story as we are talking about the environment now. As many coconut trees on Guam, Hawaiian Road have been affected by the pesky coconut rhino beetle. Fortunately, a professor over at the University of Guam has developed an innovative procedure to monitor them. A survey conducted recently by the University of Guam states that 23% of Guam's coconut palms, or one in five, show signs of attack by coconut rhinoceros beetles. In efforts to control the rhino beetle problem on Guam, Dr. Aubrey Moore, an entomologist at UOG, came up with a new survey method that would help prevent damage from the pest. The rhino beetle you may have come across on the island is the coconut rhinoceros beetle, biotype G, meaning it behaves differently from the normal rhino beetles, and G is for Guam because it was discovered here on the island in 2007. Dr. Moore says that whenever you are trying to control an issue, you must keep records of them. In the past, a way observers monitored was to use 2,000 pheromone traps, also known as the barrel traps across the island. However, those were blown away by Typhoon Dolphin in 2015. They weren't able to reestablish that monitoring system, but still had to record what rhino beetles do. So instead of reusing an outdated system, Moore developed a new monitoring method. I decided, well, let's look at what we're really trying to do, and that's prevent damage from the rhino beetle. So let's look at the, the changes in rhino beetle damage over time. And that's the whole idea of this, this schema, this survey method that we developed. This particular method is established everywhere rhino beetles are being surveyed. The CRB damage survey is used by taking high definition digital images recorded along roadsides of all major routes at a rate of one per second by a smartphone attached to a vehicle with a magnetic device mount angled at 15 degrees. Then in the lab, a computer program developed using an artificial intelligence technique called deep learning examines every image to identify all the coconut palms, measure the CRB damage to each, and then generates an interactive map. The new method is way better because the whole island will be covered in two days. Dr. Moore shares ways you can identify a tree that has been affected by a rhino beetle. The adults, both the males and females, mm -hmm. bore in to feed on the sap. When they do that, there's a borehole. Okay. Okay, and it's about this big, about an inch in diameter. Mm -hmm. uh, often you don't see them because the boreholes are started behind the, uh, the outer fronds. Mm -hmm. But when those fronds fall off, you'll see the borehole in the stem or in uh, the petiole, the, the base of the frond that fell off. He added that a hooked wire can be used to extract and destroy rhinoceros beetles adults feeding in coconut trees, further stating that if you stop CRB damage even after it being affected badly, the tree will heal on its own. The survey will be done by monthly and the data will continue to be used to measure changes in damage in response to CRB pest control activities. Moore's work on monitoring CRB damage in Guam is supported by grants from the U.S. Department of the Interior, Office of Insular Affairs, and the U.S. Forest Service. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahusi Isaiah Uggen. All right, everybody, and remember, of course, for the very latest Guam news headlines, make sure to check out KUAM.com. There are a couple of uh, comments I want to read right now, especially a very, very wonderful comment 
very uh, thought-provoking by our friend Maggie Monroe Anderson, who, by the way, has just earned top fan status. And she's super, super excited about it. So, Maggie, congratulations. You absolutely deserve it. Um, Speaking about what I was saying earlier about, like, why I'm not registering for the giveaway because, you know, I, I feel that people need it more than I do. Uh, she has a very good comment. She goes, Jason, if you won, you could use the money in ways others can't. In other words, you could divide it in many ways to various charities and scholarships and churches. Very, very true. You'd providing to multiple families on island. That is a very, very good point, Chris. And you have said that you would, if you if you win, because you are now registered. Oh, Lordy. You said you would donate it at least in part, right? I've, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So, th- th- so there's there's our like our comment topic for the morning, right? <laughs> Please, everybody, make sure that you register. Make sure that you get your name in for the for the giveaway. If you did win, what would you do with it? And absolutely no judgment. If you want to spend it on yourself and your family. No judging, guys. Yeah. I mean, you know, everybody's going through hard times right now. If you just want to take care of bills or you just want to splurge and treat yourself, that's absolutely doable. If you want to be charitable and give it to, like Maggie said, you want to give it to a scholarship, to a church, to Catholic Social Services. Uh, what have you? I was thinking if I if I did win, I would actually split it in half, and I would get half to my sister to pay her mortgage. I would get half to my mom to pay her mortgage. I wouldn't see a cent. Wow, that's just the kind of man he yeah. is. Because you know you can actually give a gift up to a certain um, a certain denomination, right? And you won't get taxed for it. That's the there's his real motive. Yeah, and no, and you know why? Because I because I learned that from it's Shawsh- not that he's da- he's just doing it for the taxes. No, because I learned that from Shawshank Redemption. Okay, thanks. <laughs> you, you can give you can give a tax free donation to somebody and you won't get the hit. But no, thanks. so that is our that is uh, our topic for this morning in the comments. Please, everybody, jump in. Let us know what you would do with it. Um, anything is good, and good luck to all of you. Make sure once again visit guam.org slash vax. And I want to know, and Chris wants to know, and Joe Sir wants to know, if you do win the ten thousand. What would you do with that money? Hey, uh, Annie, bo- Annie Bonds on our Facebook live feed comments. Good morning from Guam and off a day from, uh, or good morning Guam and off a day from Killeen, Texas. Lots of Chamorros out there. We yeah, always see. tons. Uh, Mama, Vera, Mama Vera, Debbie Davis, uh, she says if she won, she could give her money, the, the winnings to charity, St. Jude's Children Hospital. So, oh, St. Jude's. That's that. That's the that's the uh, organization that helps kids with cancer. Margaret Blas watching from beautiful scenic Arizona. Good morning, Arizona. Mm. Uh, who else we got here? Uh, George Freeze, Mr. Freeze. Uh, good morning on you. Hey, jump on our Facebook live feed, Chris Cave. Good morning. Uh, good luck, everyone. And just also wanted to. Uh, what's up, Chris? What's up, buddy? Uh, Margaret Blas again uh, comments. Uh, give to church and foster care. Wow. I'm waiting well, for the gonna go on a shopping spree. <laughs> Comment, hey, you right? know, I mean, you know what? You're you're still contributing to the economy. You're helping. Yeah, you're yeah, helping yeah. somebody's like small business. You go in over and check like a check out our friends over at like you know just uh, completely arbitrarily like over at American Music right next to us here in Harmon and everything like that. You're helping a locally owned small business. So, uh, right, and you know Jay had the news of the. I mean, just a terrible, 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 tragic uh, story uh, yesterday. Uh, Jason, of course, it was a uh, breaking news: the stabbing, um, the stabbing death, and we'll we'll have more on that uh, coming up. Uh, of a 39-year-old woman, and then right, also a yeah. 19-year-old was was injured. Right, and I just want to offer my condolences to uh, yes. uh, my friend Matt Laguatnia. Uh, that's the mo- the the victim in this case is the, is the mother of his kids, and I know that uh, he's just going through the family's just going through so much right now. They have been talking about that on social media. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of stuff on uh, social media, guys. But we're of course we're waiting for the official word from uh, the Guam Police Department. But we do know that they are still actively looking for the suspect uh, in this case, mm-hmm. and we'll uh, you know we reached out to the chief of police. Um, uh, for more info uh, this morning. But again, you know, this island is so small and th- to have these tragedies happening just too, too often. And just know uh, that as you guys wake up and uh, go about your day this morning, that there's a family that's uh, mourning just the terrible loss of of a mother, a, a sister, a loved one. Uh, and that's happening right here on Guam. Yeah, uh, be- before you get your day started, you know, like, why don't you just send up, send up a prayer or two for... Yeah. For the family of uh, the family and the surviving relatives of the people that have been affected by this. Right, and we'll get more uh, info on this uh, story as it continues uh, to develop here. Uh, good luck to the Guam Police Department as they look for uh, the suspect in this uh, case. It's 
This is the Breeze 93.9 KUAM FM, Hagatni Guam. Good morning. Catch Sports Link on the KUAM's multi platform morning show. The Link just got a little more delicious with Feed Me Fridays. Chris, Sabrina, Jason, and the rest of the morning crew will take some time each Friday to talk food, taste food, and bring you all the latest and greatest in food from King's Restaurants and Ruby Tuesday Guam. Old faves, new hits, and everything on the menu in between. It's Feed Me Fridays on the link catch sports link on the kuam news morning show the link every friday to hear about the latest in sports news game schedules athlete profiles and more sports link brought to you each week by cure alkaline water airs every friday across the multimedia platforms of kuam tune into the broadcast on breeze 93.9 fm on kuam tv 11 live streaming through the kuam news facebook page or view highlights on youtube kuam news facebook and instagram sports link is hosted by dave delgado through kuam sports and he will make sure that everyone knows what is happening on the field in the gyms and everywhere in between. Uno Go, delivering meals from your favorite restaurants and more, including delivering sodas and adult beverages from the Bottle Shack. Visit uno-go.com or download the app today. Also follow them on Instagram and Facebook. After a year with so many games and events delayed or unplayed, the world is ready for anything and everything in the world of sports. KUAM Communications is ready with more games, more championships, and more specials that are guaranteed to bring out the fan in you. Don't miss a minute of gameplay from NBC on KUAM TV 8 or from CBS on KUAM TV 11. Every month, we'll bring you the action and excitement. Brought to you locally by Michelob Ultra, Superior Light Beer, Marianas Irrigation and Landscape, and Docomo Pacific. Just more great reasons to tune in and turn on so you'll fall in love with TV again with the best from KUAM Communications. Looking for TV schedules, upcoming sports, or special presentations, or what you may have missed over the busy week you had? Well, look no further than KUAM Digital Digest. This weekly email newsletter puts all kinds of information in the hands of subscribers each and every week. Just subscribe and we will make sure you keep up with your favorites and stay informed and entertained throughout it all. Go to KUAM.com, click on the newsletter tab, give us your email address, and you are all set. Brought to you in digital partnership with King's Restaurant and Ruby Tuesday Guam. It's the KOM Digital Digest, your weekly guide to the latest information and best entertainment on the stations and platforms of KUAM. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648 7867 for more information. Get the job done the right way by getting the right stuff at East West Rental Center. With years of experience helping builders, we definitely got what you need. Call 646-1463 or visit us in Upper Tumon. Open Monday to Saturday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Help us celebrate the class of 2021. KUAM wants to help you celebrate this touchstone moment in the lives of your graduates. For the months of May and June, we will flood the social media pages of KUAM with photos and well wishes for the class of 2021 grads. Log on to KUAM.com to submit photos and brief messages or captions. Then look for your special grad on KUAM Instagram and the Facebook pages from all of your friends here at KUAM. Congratulations, seniors! My whole family is fully vaccinated because we understand the importance of it. I've seen my daughter, her boyfriend, and friends endure COVID, and I've lost family members because of the virus. I chose to get vaccinated to protect those around me, and most importantly, because of my parents. I'm Jonah Gancharfres, KUAM senior producer, and I'm a proud member of the vaccination. Join the vaccination, scan and plan. For more information, go to KUAM.com.
Good morning, 703. The link. Thank you guys so much for your kind words. Out and about. Uh, ran into an old friend, Marsha and her hubby at Payless. And they were just talking about how they love waking up with the link. And in case you didn't know, we're on KUAM TV from 8 to 10 okay so switch it up a little bit on uh you guys we got the facebook live feed if you're into watching the link um we're also of course on the breeze 93.9 fm hey hey, hey. Uh, there's an audio stream i think docomo channel 10 so many ways to catch the link live good morning my name is chris sabrina salisman tanani uh urgent family travel She's in Las Vegas, and she just got there. She was supposed to uh, zoom in this morning, but jet lag, Sabrina. Yeah. Uh, but you'll be hearing from her. Don't worry. Which means all of our guests this morning, they kind of get an easy time. Because <laughs> Mayor Alex like, ooh, Bree's gone. All right. <laughs> We're just going to obla, right? <laughs> uh, Mayor Jesse Alex. You know, every Monday, guys, we do an update with the Mayor's Council of Guam, and uh, sometimes it's Mayor Alex. Sometimes he'll bring on, uh, you know, different mayors. Uh, Mayor, just full disclosure, I did reach out to Mayor Louise Rivera uh, a little bit ago uh, just because of the, the stabbing that took place uh, in her village. But uh, unfortunately, she has a uh, family funeral to attend to this morning. So she's going to come on tomorrow just to kind of give us an update. Uh, we'll cover that and then whatever else is going on in, in the village. Uh, but pretty eventful weekend for the Mayor's Council of Guam, Mayor. Well, I think it was a good weekend. I think everyone had a, a I mean, of course, it's unfortunate uh, tragedy, right, that we experienced yesterday. But I think for the most part, I think everyone was doing okay today, this weekend. Uh, seems like a relaxed weekend. Uh, we Last week, we did, uh, I did appear at the legislature for uh, that resolution 9336. And that was important for us because, you know, I mean, this, this, um, this, uh, American Rescue Plan funds are, are important for us as an island and, and they're different, different um, uh, point of view as to how that's going to best uh, work for us. And, and in, in the mayor's, on the mayor's side, it would definitely help us in maintaining the island so that we can prepare it for, you know, our, our tourist, uh, tourist uh, arrivals. So we're hoping that we, we certainly can, can get a, a fair share of that. Of that pie, and as well as uh, fund the, the other operations government wide that assist us. And so, uh, you know, I do know that uh, being there was important for us as a council, but it was also important so that the governor knows that we, we want to work with her as well in uh, hopefully receiving those funds, not only for the mayor's council, but like I said, for the for the other agencies that that are important for us. And and uh, I mean, I can they're important for us because, uh, for example, CLTC. Uh, we, we have a lot of uh, trash issues, and KUM did a great, uh, you know, story, or did several stories on illegal right. dumping, and yeah. a lot of that happens on CLTC property. And so perhaps this money can actually go to, uh, you know, regulate that more uh, for those those lease agreements that, that are, are made, because a lot of our issues are, are from the CLTC properties. And uh, they, they may not have anyone on there, uh, but there's some seven, definitely someone who's leasing the property. And we find a lot of uh, junk vehicles. And we say junk vehicles because uh, a lot of, we have a lot of mechanics on Guam. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, they, they take apart what they need and then they dump it. And so that's, that's our, one of the bigger problems for, for some of the mayors. 
and uh, where, you know, so a lot of regulation is, necess is necessary and we think is, is important for those CLTC properties. And not only for junk vehicles, but for everything else that, that's related to the property that uh, the lessees do not uh, follow. And so, and that sets, a, and that's a big image for us because when, when tourists drive around the island and, and they get lost, <laughs> right? They go into this road, right? So they, what do they see? They see trash. And so, so it is, you know, that's, that's definitely something on our, on our list. And we're hoping that uh, both the legislature and the governor consider that. Um, I think we also, I also talked about the DPW share and I, and that's important uh, as well because the village ma uh, streets master plan I mean, the, the player, the mayors uh, played a vital role in that master plan. And I believe that master plan was somewhere 2008, 2009. Uh, it was developed, at the, you know, in that year, in those years. And I'm not sure how much of that plan is actually being followed. Uh, nevertheless, we do know that DPW does try their best to, you know, to implement or execute that plan. Uh, but I know that was like several millions of dollars that right. it needed, or maybe even hundreds of millions of dollars. But anything, anything to to execute a portion of that plan to to upgrade and to to make our roads safe uh, for us in PD and and for like Meleso and Santa Rita and other villages, flooding is is a big issue. And so you know when it's raining and the sometimes tourists don't don't plan uh, to be here on rainy season, but they're here. And so if they're driving, right, it, it's it is a big deal. Uh, if you're driving Route 1 uh, in PT, that Polaris Point is, is a big deal because then they have to turn around. So all those all those issues are are certainly at the forefront of the mayor's council. And, and again, we're, we're just hoping that they, they can be addressed because it not only helps us as an island, but it helps our economy uh, in the end. And, uh, you know, when we're looking at, at um, we're looking at increasing capacity or increasing uh, jobs that, in the private sector, perhaps this this can help with the contracting agencies or the, the contractors uh, hiring uh, more more workers. I do know of some contractors or construction companies who are having difficulty with maintaining, uh, you know, these these uh, men and women who work for them, the heavy equipment operators, and uh, and and their you know and that sort because of, of PUA. And we all know that you you guys have covered stories on that. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, that's that was a big deal for us, and like I said, it, it we're, we're definitely on top of that, and hoping that uh, hoping we can, you know, again get get some money from it and, and get some help because it's it's uh, it'll 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 certainly uh, make a, a big deal for us or a big dent in 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 our operations, and of course the the endless problem is the animal control, right? So we talk about it all the time. I mean, it's like some people want, I want to turn off the radio if I start hearing animal control. Not me. But, I turn yeah. it up. I turn it up when I hear animal. So, so the animal control issue, I mean, you know, and, and that's, I mean, and, and we, I reported that, at, uh, discussed it at our last mayor's council meeting that I do want to take a more active role in, in our stance with animal control. And uh, so we will, we will be, the mayor's council will be working on a, our own standing committee for animal control. And, and we will uh, press forward. But the ARP, how, how that relates to ARP because the legislature recommends to the governor $5 million to an, uh, agriculture. But the entire $5 million is not for animal control. It was recommended for, for different uh, divisions within the agriculture. But one of the things that's important is to know that the capa increasing capacity of game is, is important, especially for a roundup yeah. committee because uh, you reported it as well that you know villages mayors sometimes have to hold on to the dogs and cats because gain is is full so increasing capacity is, is real important for us and but also uh to, to push that point further the the operation and the the manpower at the division of animal control is is also very important because they need to agriculture needs to ramp that division up because Animal control is within their within their realm, within their responsibility, right. and so we're really hoping that you know that uh, some of this money can can be used for that purpose, and it, it ties also into keeping keeping our industry afloat, our tourism industry afloat, because you, we don't want our tourists and our visitors to see that, and and it it, it it's a lot. It happens in, in not only in Tumon, it's everywhere. So. 
that's important for us and and that's what we uh, that's what i presented at, at the uh, legislature last week and we're crossing our fingers still <laughs> haven't heard anything and but i do want to say i do want to rebut what mr burns said though being i was waiting for sabrina to be here so she could <laughs> throw me all the stones and say well you know mr burns said this well mr burns said that but i have email that says otherwise <laughs> that you know, we did submit our, our timesheets and we did make that request to pay our employees, our, our COVID, the COVID pay. Uh, but again, the, the notice to us was that there was no uh, funding for it and that we would have to use our local funds. And it's just, it's black and white, it's not gray, you know? So uh, what we know is that we don't have local money to pay our employees the COVID pay and we're waiting for stimulus money, which is this American Rescue right, Plan right. money to pay I mean, Mayor, is that, is that, I mean, for you guys to run, is it, did you just run out of money to pay this COVID pay or are you guys just totally broke in June? Uh, no, well, no, we, we can't pay this, this COVID pay. Uh, ever since we started COVID pay, it was, it first was from the CARES Act, right? Right. So we never used, we never used local money, but we, and we can't use local money because, our local money that pays the regular salaries and our regular operations will run out in June. And so there's just absolutely nothing else that we can, wow. you know, we can't tap from anything else. So what would your message be to Mr. Byrne after his appearance on the show Friday? Well, I mean, I don't need to send him a message. I think that, that, uh, Adeloup has reconfirmed to me that our staff will get paid. Okay. Right on. And do they tell you how they're going to get paid? Or they just say, hey, don't worry about it. Quit going on the link and complaining. <laughs> well, you know what? But you see, that's the thing about communication, right? So when, you, when we're communicating with one another, hey, you're going to get somewhere. And so okay. I'm not, I don't want to fight with anybody. I just want to get what's owed to our, our staff. And our, and our staff are definitely owed it, right? So, yes, no, I got confirmation that they will, they are, uh, the chief of staff confirmed that... <laughs> That American Rescue Plan money will be used to pay for uh, pay our COVID. Yeah, Mayor, Mayor I, I say all the time on the show and everything. There's three really effective ways to get the word out: and that's <laughs> telephone, telegraph, or tell Chris Barnett, or tell a link. <laughs> <laughs> tell Chris Barnett. Uh, that's true. Well, you know, I, <laughs> John Junior Calvo, if you're listening, uh, Mayor Alec just announced that you confirmed. <laughs> even if you even if he didn't, you should just say he did. <laughs> You realize you're taking the place of many Gov Guam memos right yeah. now, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mayor, I hate, to, I hate to go off topic, but there was a comment. They deleted it, though, but it, was, it said, is Mayor Alec wearing lipstick? Hey. No. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to judge, Mayor. I mean, it's Pride Month. It's 2021. You want to wear lipstick? Go for it. No. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No. Then my my friend Joy commented, maybe it's chapstick. No, I'm not. Did, did you eat empanada this morning? No. <laughs> no. Anything anything with a choti? No, that's nope. just that's just that's a compliment. Me. Hey, own it. Hell yeah, he's got big juicy red lips. <laughs> right on. Don't hate. Don't hate, ladies. <laughs> stop video right <laughs> stop video hey, hey, mayor real quick who who, yeah. uh, who made the uh, who made that lovely painting behind you oh it's actually from hawaii it's stephen powers it's uh it's uh it's a copy of an original one of his uh his originals oh that's beautiful i like it because it's not only the hawaiian the hawaiian seashore but it has our piece of kind of beautiful yeah it does i see that yeah yeah right on yeah. well yeah, uh that's nice <laughs> I don't know where we're going to go after that lipstick comment, but... Uh, <laughs> Stop video, I told right, you. I know. <laughs> uh, what do you guys Mayor got? Mayor got strong in here, now I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, what do uh, you guys got going on this week, though? Uh, oh, this week. So we have our... Uh, we're real important for the 19 districts, uh, villages. We have uh, GPD uh, traffic direction training, and that's mm. important because you see our staff out there all the time escorting funerals and, and directing traffic for the schools. And one of the things that was always very uh, alarming to me is that not everyone was trained. And so thank goodness for uh, GPD's willingness to, to come out to, to train our staff. And so we have about 100 of our staff actually attending this training uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact. 
and uh, that's uh, that's our first part of the training. The next part will be for funeral escorting. Mm -hmm. uh, and the thing is, you know, we're not we're not um, our staff are not police officers, and so you know they they really do need the the training for it because we we run our amber lights and sometimes I think some of our staff thinks they <laughs> they have the right of way, and you know liability is a big issue. So so that's a big deal for us. Uh, the veterans, there's a vet, veterans organization that's um, going Mayor, around the village. Sorry, sorry, Mayor, just to go back, when and where are you guys going to do that uh, training? Uh, tomorrow at the Tumuni Senior Center, uh, I believe it's from 9 a.m. to 12. Or 9 to 1 p.m., I believe. Yeah, sorry, 9 a.m. to 1 So is it going to be ITC intersection? <laughs> are they know, going out? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. It, it, it possibly could, yeah. Because they so were, when my uh, partners came into office and my staff, uh, I had my staff trained, and they they were they were trained out there next to your your traffic light in Harmon. Right, right. <laughs> you know, it was it was a funny story, but you know, it's better that they're they're trained that way, right? It's do or die out there, Mayor. <laughs> exactly, do it right. <laughs> yeah, they had the recruits out there uh, directing traffic on uh, Friday. Yep, I saw that. And it's always funny to see these recruits, and they're so green, and they're shy. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, geez, geez. <laughs> and then you see them four years later, and their shirt sleeves are like four sizes too small. And <laughs> yeah. hey, uh, uh, Mayor, Mayor, I got I got a real quick question. Um, have have any of your colleagues, or you know, have you guys had like any sort of discussions about you know? Of course, you know, we're looking at Liberation Day as kind of like the day of whether our community will achieve herd immunity or not. But for the villages whose uh, fiestas are coming up, you know, uh, after that, uh, have, have you had any conversations about like, you know, how they might intend to, uh, observe if not completely like celebrate, you know, um, the patron saint of each village, depending on where we are at that point. So the, the fiestas are, are typical, of course, the, the mayors always play a vital role in fiestas, right? But the fiestas are really controlled by the archdiocese of Gagnia because it did, they're the ones that, that set the schedule and, right. okay. and, uh, because the most recent one was Sinahania, right? And I believe, you know, they, they said we, we observed and, but, you know, by no means did we, you know, anybody. So no, we, have had, we haven't had any discussion about fiestas in particular, uh, but I think most are, you know, still doing it as, as they did last year, where they just have the mass at, at the church and, and that's really it. I don't believe there's any serving, any food serving mm -hmm. after the, after the mass or, or there's any parties at all. Okay. I, I believe there's a, like coming up, I think it's, uh, I think ordered is coming up, right? Um, and so they, they, I know that they're just kind of having a mass. They're not doing any, you know, not Tato Tumano or any other kind of mm. festivities. Mm, okay. So that kind of yeah. just goes right into like liberation. So again, we'll, we'll be, we'll be having a committee meeting on the, those li with the liberation uh, memorials because they, they, ha they have to plan as well. Mm. And we, we want them to plan within their hundred capacity or hundred, um, because you know it just it can get out of hand yeah. it really can get out of hand yeah. mm -hmm. i mean there, there's some mayors that there was one mayor who said he could easily have two to three hundred people at his memorial and you know i mean of course who's there right our mononko are there yeah. so we want to yeah. be careful i mean if you if they're going to be there then maybe just them and you know separate them and 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 whatever it is as long as we're following uh protocol right? and for countless families on island i mean this you know hosting you know their villages fiesta is like a tradition that goes you know generations deep and everything so of course you know oh, they're, yeah. they're going to want to participate but you know hopefully in a safe way they are but but the villages the mayors still are not lending out equipment as we uh, typically do so a lot uh, of times they yeah and so the other the other thing is that a lot of us have also uh, reduced our equipment inventory uh, because of of COVID, right? And so we have to be careful with that. When when we receive it, everything has to be sanitized. Before it goes out, it just has to be sanitized again because it went from one hand to another hand sure. from a storage container, right? So there's the our our operations have changed drastically uh, since COVID. And so borrowing two to three hundred chairs, you know, four canopies and twenty tables is just out of the picture these these days. Right. And so uh, most mayors are, are not even lending out canopies and tables anymore. Uh, some don't even have that available. But uh, the chairs, that I know that they're still lending out about 50 chairs per per resident uh, as requested, you know. But then, so, again, some, some mayors, again, only have 100 chairs. 
there are other mayors that have more. And so, you know, we, and, and in a way it's a good thing because there's, we cannot control what happens outside of our office and we can't control what happens at the park and we can't control what happens at their home in, in so many ways, right? Yeah. So, uh, and there, there are definitely residents who are, are, are really good about making sure that their the protocols are followed. So that, that's a good thing. But yeah, yeah we, we, we don't have the same equipment inventory as we did pre-COVID. Right. Mayor, you were saying something about the veterans before we got off topic. Uh, yeah, so there's a veterans organization. It's quite of a long, I got, uh, the way, the truth, and the light. I don't, um, that's their, uh, it's their stationary says by veterans and for veterans. And so they, they're going around the villages helping, holding these um, outreach town hall meeting type type um, events. And they're they're trying to, to establish a veterans registry. And so they'll be in PD this Wednesday at 7 p.m. at the PD social hall. I know they've they've been to MTM. I believe they've even been to Dedido already, but they're going to be going around the villages. Every time someone asks us what our, our veteran population is in, in the villages, we don't know, and we we don't have a, you know, we don't have a good count, and we don't have a database for it. That's definitely also that's one of the other things that I was asking for uh, with the with this American Rescue Plan is for. The Office of Technology to include us in in this uh, technology upgrade because the Mayor's Council of Guam is, you know, we have we all have our own email addresses. We don't have a single server that 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 takes care of all of us. It's 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 just we're all on our own. We we don't connect to public health, public um, uh, revenue tax, Gura. So you know that's just it's that's behind the times. Really, we need to step it up. So ho hopefully that'll that'll be included in that. But yeah, that's the veterans organization. Uh, there's, there's different uh, gentlemen that are, are uh, is, part it, of that. is it local mayor or like the national? Yes. It's local. It's I'll send local. me some contacts and we'll, we'll get them on the show to get the word out. Okay. Yeah. Right yeah. I'll send it to you. And then, you know what, we have a lot of uh, big veterans in, in PD. And so when I sent that out on email, they, they responded that they were thankful. And so, you know, if they're, if they're going to uh, reply to that as, as being helpful, then, you know, that, that's a good thing. Right on. So, well, that's, let's, uh, that's, that's a, let's gas you up a little bit before you go. Uh, G. Mart Tegenko <laughs> in our comments. He has got lips. <laughs> Maggie Monroe Anderson says, ha ha, too oh, cute. Man, I told you. <laughs> Maggie writes in, ha ha, too cute. Feeling jelly of those juicy lips, Mayor. E and G. Mart again <laughs> puts, that's what you call hot lips. There you go, Mayor. Have a good Monday. <laughs> You too. <laughs> Mayor, you're, gonna be, you're gonna be able to charge for uh, charge for selfies and autographs pretty soon. <laughs> Have a great week. Adios. Mayor, <laughs> Mayor, that's all natural, right? Yeah. You know, He's you know like what? He, he also has the the most uh, signature laugh. I think not yeah, just yeah, of the yeah, mayors, yeah. but of any any Guamanian. Like you you hear that big boisterous booming yeah, yeah, laugh yeah. and everything like that. You know Mayor Jesse's in the house. All right. Uh 724. Uh, who's coming up on the show, Jay? Yeah, uh, well, Crystals is scheduled to join us from Adeloupe, uh in just a few moments, and we are going to talk about exactly where we are with the number of Guamanians who have registered for the uh, vaccination giveaway. Uh, she's coming up. And about after we do news, after we switch over and go on KUM TV at 8 o'clock, Landon, because it is Monday, from the NWS is going to come in and tell us what the weather situation is, could be, will right. be. Um, and you know, L Landon's always gonna have the, like these really cool slides with probably something featuring you know, like North Carolina. State it was University. hot yesterday. It was hot. Uh, yeah, right. Did you get yeah. any exercise this weekend? Um, yeah, I went for some walks, but uh, nothing like crazy. No, I, I got a fair amount. I, I didn't I, get any like exercise. I, I went for some walks. I did twelve miles both days. Wow. Yeah, dude. And like, yeah, got re really, really. What do really you mean sweat. you do twelve miles? Where are you going? No, just just walking around. You know, just I just tend to do a lot of laps <laughs> so what are you doing like you have a step counter or yeah i got my fitbit so wow and so it measures you know measures you know not only how many steps you take your heart rate you know your so how did level. you do 12 months so you did 24 miles of steps this weekend yeah wow where i'm trying i'm trying to burn off some of the what burn the off you're I, so skinny dude oh, well some of the weight i gained from like, staying inside oh, all this time. guy you're mr stay home and then uh, like all of a sudden i was like okay if you know but yeah. So like, where do you go? Do you go over here to the track? Yeah, or just like around the neighborhood. And right. I mean, because that's a lot of that's a lot of steps, sir. Yeah, try and mix it up. It's about you know like maybe maybe three hours a day. 
I just imagine you getting your steps in by pacing your living room. Right? I don't know what it is. Or talking, you're talking code. You talk code with you people. You can do right? that too. You know, get on the elliptical. Right, I mean, yeah. depends. Just get on and do something, basically. Yeah. Right, guys? Um, I know that we're starting to get back to normal, and a lot of you guys are going back to this sedentary lifestyle where you just, like, rot your brains on your devices. Just like that. That's how you guys look when you're rotting your brain on your devices. You know, Unless it's the link, then you look very refined and... Right, sir? You know, my, my, my late Uncle Joe, I mean, God rest his soul, my which, Nino. Which one? Uh, Joe, Joe Salas, my, dad, my okay. dad's uh, brother. My, you know, my Nino, actually, okay. you know, uh, you know uh, left us several years ago. But he always used to say, and he's like, you know, <laughs> you could go to the gym and you could work out. <laughs> if you're lifting like a bunch of hollow blocks and moving from one side of the yard to the other and, you know, pulling grass and everything like that, you're still working out. And the man was in insane shape. Yeah, my, my my Nino was always very very fit. He was a fisherman, you know. He was an outdoorsman and everything. But he he was like he's like, hey, you know, you work out, you do, you do some chores around the house. You're you're gonna get you know a fairly yeah, good exercise. That's weird huh, about like our our the older older generation. Like they didn't need to go to like the gym. You ever see pictures of Chamorros in World War Two? Oh yeah, they're I mean like even you strapping. know after the war, before yeah, dude. It's like whoa, who's your trainer? Dude, that's you, you trainers call real real tomorrow life. You boy. ever take those carabals out to the pasture? That's right, yeah. that's a good that's a good afternoon of cardio right yeah, there. Yeah, it is. I'll tell you. I I'll mean, tell you what, boy. You ever help you ever help uh like your grandmother and everything, like move those fifty pound you bags? You try like catching rice? chickens? That's yeah. a workout. You'll be begging to do a set of burpees if, yeah. if you, you know <laughs> chase chase your uncle's <laughs> chickens or your grandmother's like fifty pound bags of rice and burpees are nothing. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Give me burpees, please. Yeah. Uh, 729, it's Monday, June 7th. Uh, coming up again, uh, Crystal Pacos and Augustine of Adaloop. She's the communications uh, director. We're also getting uh, the GBB president and the czar permitting uh, former Governor Carl Gutierrez because this is a GBB uh, thing, Yeah. this uh, Vax and Win uh, deal. So I'm pretty sure Uncle Carl had a hand in, in coming up with. And I'm sure he's very, very pleased at the, at the outcome so far. Again, right. you know, in the first, the first 45 minutes. You know who's out- not pleased with the outcome? The people who are trying to win this thing, they're like, stop entering. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel. You know, when you go to like the grocery store, there's a raffle. Sir, would you like a raffle entry form? No, can you stop giving them out? Because I are diluting my chance. And right. see, that, that's again why I why I am not entering uh, because I'm already fully that's vaccinated. So, wow, what a guy. He's not entering so that you guys have a better chance to win. See, Chamorros call it Inafamalik yeah. or my Hali I wish I could say the same, but I got bills. My Hali side <laughs> said that that's altruism. Yeah, right on. Yeah, it's Inafamalik and, and altruism. Okay. But, but um, yeah, I'm sure Uncle Carl's going to have like pretty good things to say about the fact that, you know, okay, 45 minutes after the campaign, the sweepstakes, whatever you want to call it, was announced, 500 signups. An hour and a half later, they had. 2,000 signups. Right, yeah. Of course. The next so. morning, yeah. they had 12,000 yeah. signups. So, I mean, the velocity of this thing is just, you know, through the roof. I, I'm, I'm actually struggling to think about, like, how many local local marketing campaigns I've seen, like, over the years, you know, by local businesses or organizations of everything have really taken off, like, to that degree. And, again, I'm, you know, I, I, shared with, I shared with you guys, uh, like, last week um, when I was at it e um, when you had to pick your default long distance carrier for your home, like around 98, 99, uh, the owner of our company, Joe Perez, you know, he had, you know, some land and some stuff. So we gave away as a way to entice people to pick us as their long distance provider. We gave away two houses, you know, some cash cars, everything like that, you yeah. know, like, and, and it's funny because to, and to be fair, you know, I mean, we're, we're, we're in favor of this thing. And you even mentioned it, you know, like off the air uh, this morning, Chris, when you came in, there were a lot of anti-vaxxers that were jumping on the on the comment stream uh, when we were streaming you the know, governor's press conference. They were going hard, man, and they were like, "This whole thing," and they're like, "Hey, this whole thing's a bribe." Yeah, no kidding. That's exactly what it is, and that's <laughs> totally cool. It's absolutely legit. If that's what it gets you to motivate you to take action, cons- I mean, consider it. It's a bribe. It's a marketing campaign. It's a good ad. Whatever you want to call it. If it gets the job done, that's what it is. All right, 7.30. Uh, we're coming back with more of the show. Also, uh, this morning we're getting on because they had the public hearings. You know, Mayor Alec went to that public hearing. to uh, It was a, test, a public hearing on the speaker um, and the senator's resolution. Remember, this was a unanimous resolution um, about the American Rescue Plan spending plan. 
And so they had these public hearings. A bunch of people testified on Friday. Uh, Mayor Alec testified. Um, but we we haven't heard from the Guam Youth Congress. Guys, I really am into this Guam Youth Congress thing. They're high speed. Yeah, because, you know, if you look at, like, who is running the show today, they all came out of the Guam Youth Congress. It's like a senator factory. We've seen, yeah, we've seen a lot of, like, young... Now, I believe Rory was in the youth. Rory Congress. Rory was in the youth was Congress. The the I think Carlo Congress? Branch was in the youth Congress. Yeah. Michael Sir Nicholas was in the youth Congress. I think Ricky Orsini, who's now Ricky a, Orsini. Yeah. So was, either they go to be a senator or whatever, or they work for the senators. Well, when, when I taught advising. at, a, yeah. I taught for a semester um, at UOG, and Ricky was my student, and she was always very, Rick, very. Ricky impressive. Orsini, uh, if you guys don't know, she uh, she's up at Adaloop. She's one of the policy. Uh, uh, directors there, but she's yep. also been, I, I want to say, chief of staff or pretty high up there for Senator uh, Kelly Marsh. Uh, also, the, also the niece of uh, the late, uh, the man who was the youngest senator at the time. Uh, former, former Senator Sonny Orsini, Sonny Orsini. Right, who I, I thought about the other day because we had Asu Smokehouse for lunch. Oh, nice. Right. Uh, at 732, quick break, and Crystal Paco St. Augustine's next, right here on The Link. Good morning. Uno Go, delivering meals from your favorite restaurants and more, including delivering sodas and adult beverages from the Bottle Shack. Visit uno-go.com or download the app today. Also, follow them on Instagram and Facebook. KUAM's multi-platform morning show, The Link, just got a little more delicious with Feed Me Fridays. Chris, Sabrina, Jason, and the rest of the morning crew will take some time each Friday to talk food, taste food, and bring you all the latest and greatest in food from King's Restaurants and Ruby Tuesday Guam, old faves, new hits, and everything on the menu in between. It's Feed Me Fridays on The Link. Get the job done the right way by getting the right stuff at East West Rental Center. With years of experience helping builders, we definitely got what you need. Call 646-1463 or visit us in Upper Tumon. Open Monday to Saturday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The relationship between Guam and Manila, Philippines is undeniable as we share similar cultural traditions, history, and heritage with generations of Filipinos calling Guam home. KUAM presents a monthly look at the capital city featuring in-depth and engaging interviews on everything from medical tourism to new business and government leaders. Veteran newscaster Nestor Lecanto delivers Beyond Our Borders. This special program is brought to you by the Bank of Guam and KFC. Get the job done the right way by getting the right stuff at East West Rental Center. With years of experience helping builders, we definitely got what you need. Call 646-1463 or visit us in Upper Tumon. Open Monday to Saturday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. KUAM Communications continues our perpetuation of our Samoro culture, language, and heritage with features available to our listening and viewing audience including streaming of Samoro music 24 hours per day on Isla Digital Radio on KUAM.com and the KUAM News app. Samoro News Update, weekdays on the link and the KUAM News YouTube channel. Conversations about life in our Samoro language podcast with Tosta Paku with Kin Conception. Seasonal specials, shows and other features highlighting the beauty of our language, culture, and history. It's a new era of our continued commitment to our tomorrow heritage. Isla, watch, listen, stream, be by Isla! The world of television is more exciting than ever. Don't miss a minute of special presentations from NBC on KUAM TV 8 or from CBS on KUAM TV 11. Every month, we'll bring you the fun and excitement of award shows and red carpet moments, special series presentations, and other great network programs. Brought to you locally by King's Restaurant, Ruby Tuesday Guam, Bud Light Seltzer, and Docomo Pacific. Giving you more reasons to tune in and turn on. Fall in love with TV again with the best from KUAM Communications.
It's Monday morning here on this little slice of heaven we like to call Guam, and it looks outside. I'm looking at the grass, and it seems that the dew is still on the leaves, but that is going to be a much different case in about 20 minutes as uh, everybody is heading to work. So please, if you're making your way around our beautiful island, please drive safely and mind those around you. Thank you very much. We're going to go to our friends down in Adeloupe right now, specifically Crystal Pacos Nagasin, who is the governor's communi communications director and uh crystal i would say you had a very very busy weekend but um i'd say very very fortuitous too because uh you know we've been talking about this over and over and over and i've te been telling people how i was like what's that bombing you and just saying like wow great job you know, where are you with the numbers and everything so you were telling us at the end of the press conference you know, like in 45 minutes 500 signups by 5 p.m that day you had 2,000. by the next morning by the time the sun came up, you have 12,000. Uh, where are we now with the number of Guamanians who have registered? Well, half a day. Good morning, Jace. Good morning, Chris. And good morning, KUM and the people of Guam. Happy Monday. Yes, great news on our Vax and Win program, or a Vax and Win promo, our incentive promo. We, as of this morning, I just checked 19,000, over 19,000 wow. people have entered to win our Vax and Win promo or incentive pr promotion. And I just want to note that, you know, this promotion actually incentivizes even greater those who went out and got their vaccine early, because that means you're eligible for more weeks. And so starting June 16, we will start that raffling of either the cash, the $10,000 in cash and the car. So a cash and car every week. And then of course, our 17 and unders are eligible to win a number of prizes, including gift cards and, uh, um, restaurant and dining experiences and and of course electronics everyone's favorite mm -hmm. now, that's really really impressive Nineteen thousand people in like in basically like less than mm -hmm. three full calendar days is is amazing right. i was really excited to announce over 500 entries before the press conference even ended and that speaks to the volume to the the fact that our site was live our site was working everything we got the mechanics to work just fine so thanks to glimpses and, and the guam visitors bureau most especially for partnering with us for this, this great incentive program, which is in line with what's happening across the nation. Mm -hmm. So you saw Biden roll out his, all the states, the different states rolling out theirs. And so people of Guam have really responded. I've heard a few people saying they're going to go out and get vaccinated now. Or for those who've already got their vaccine, they're like, I signed up already. It was easy. It takes a few short minutes. All you need to do is provide your name, your birthday, uh, how we can reach you. And then, of course, the information on your vaccination. So if you receive mm -hmm. the Pfizer, the Moderna, the Johnson & Johnson, and your date of your vaccination. So you can find it all on your immunization card. So it's like not like you have to go very far to find this information, just how we can reach you and when you got vaccinated. So when we pull your name, we're able to confirm it either through WebIZ, our local database for individuals who got vaccinated, or through the Department of Defense or the Guam National Guard. So I do want to emphasize that those individuals are also eligible to win. Because mm -hmm. I think that was quite understood on Friday. Yes, you are eligible to win if you are vaccinated on Guam and you reside here. Yeah, again, you know, that number that number is so impressive. Well over 19,000 Guamanians in less than three full days have already registered for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we want to call it a, pr a promotion, right? Because I was wondering, you know, are you guys calling it sweepstakes, giveaway, lottery, and everything like that? We're, we're framing it as a, as a promotion, right? I understand it as a promotion, yes. Okay. An okay, incentive good. promotion. Okay. Um, at the, at the same time, it's it's like, wow, like we got all those people. At the same time, I can, the only thing I can say is, you know, like, duh, <laughs> we're giving away cash and a car and everything like that. That's the mm -hmm. ultimate incentive uh, to get people to do what's people right. People love raffles. They love raffles. You see yeah. those mall raffles and those giveaways. You see the liberation one, the annual liberation one we have. Yep. And so maybe now that's a good segue to um, how we're giving these away. So now that you've entered to win, you're one of the 19,000 plus or the, the future entries, how do you win? How do you get notified? So every Wednesday at 7.21 a.m., we'll do a live, a Facebook Live on Governor's Facebook page. We'll pull those names, verify them, and then we'll call out those names for those individuals. And I, I likely a call from the governor and, and lieutenant governor to, to announce that you've been a winner, that you've been um, declared a winner. So uh, as of Friday, we had... 83,123 people vaccinated. And our goal is 96,000. Okay, and so I want to yeah. go back to what the goal is. I think a lot of people were confused in the number. We, got into the, we didn't get into the weeds in that. Okay. So 96,000 adults is what we're looking at. That's the goal. Right. So in line with the nation, we're looking at 
vaccinating 80% of our adult population. And we use adults because we know that they're more likely to be the super spreaders. They're more likely to transmit uh, the virus from one person to another. And then the goal, I mean, the hope rather is that, you know, when mom and dad get vaccinated, they make it a family event. And so their kids are likely vaccinated. So vaccination should be a family event, especially if you have kids in your household that are 12 and over, Mm -hmm. you can totally make it a family event. But back to the raffle, every Wednesday at 721, starting June 16th. So that's six weeks of giveaways. That's $60,000 in cash total. So $10,000 every week. And then a car every week. So six different cars, one from each of the dealerships, the car dealerships here on Guam. And so be announcing that at 721 a.m. every Wednesday. Uh, Again, we're pulling two names, two big prizes. That's the $10,000 in cash and the car we'll tell you what we're going to do because because it's going to happen right in the middle of the link and everything like that we'll just jump over to your uh your well, live stream when you fun. guys announce the winner so we can make sure that that the that the winners actually are well aware of, uh, that they have won most definitely and that's why we planned it that way 721 of course representing our liberation yep. july 21st Very and clever. then we wanted to, to capitalize on the fact that uh, radio listeners are our radio shows are active they have a lot of listeners a lot of engagement right now at this hour at 721, around 721 in the morning, you're driving to work, you're getting ready for work, you're getting your news. So thanks, KUAM, and to all our media partners. Yeah. Now, Crystal, um, the fact that, you know, like uh, that this uh, this promotion is is anybody who's been vaccinated is eligible. What I'd like to know is I know there was at least one vaccination clinic this week, and I know there was one down in Paseo. Uh, what were you seeing as far as maybe the momentum or, or the velocity of people who haven't been vaccinated coming out and actually getting their shot? Now that they know about like the fact that they can win cash, I haven't got the full numbers or the full uh, the update just yet. I have an eight thirty meeting with the governor and our regular ops team, so I haven't got it. But what I was reading from the media is that it's been a steady flow. Mm. Um, it's a steady flow of people coming in. You know, maybe they were hesitant. Now they have that extra incentive, that added incentive. I was seeing some news reports saying you know people would get vaccinated if there was even just gas cards, if there was just uh, some type of. Uh, reimbursement for their time. And so I think this is, is, is a really good reimbursement for your time to, to go out and get vaccinated. Again, we've we've updated our models for, we've come a long way since last December, Jason. And if mm-hmm. you can recall how crazy it was those first few weeks, those first few days of vaccinations, uh, the long lines, uh, the the waiting, the, the fear that you wouldn't get seen because we didn't have enough vaccine supply. And that's not the case. We've come such a long way. We've learned a lot along the the way a steep learning curve here but then we've also added so many different sites so it's north central and south we have drive-through formats you can go to the university of guam if you're most comfortable with with the national guard administering your vaccine you can go to your private provider if you wish if you're more comfortable with your doctor giving you your vaccine in the comforts of your doctor's clinic maybe that's your your choice Uh, you can go to the north northern community health center or the southern community health center when we have those available and if maybe that's the closest, again, we're trying to come out to you. And as the governor has repeatedly stated, uh, we want to make sure we go out to you. So I know at the Port Authority of Guam, there was a, a large demand there. There was a demand for vaccines for not only the port employees, but also their families. Their families and their friends were able to come out and we had a great um, event there. I understand it was a mix of both drive through and walk-ins. And so maybe you don't want to get out of your car. And we've, we've adopted that format as well. I know that the teeds and I witnessed firsthand the teeds and model, uh, the drive through. And it was fantastic because you could get tested first, you could get swabbed, you'd wait for your results. If you were negative, you drove up right to the next stall and you got your vaccine. Nice. And it a matter of less than maybe 30, 40 minutes. And that's mostly the wait times for the results and for the observation, you were out. Yeah. You, so, you, I mean, you know, be- you know, you know better than we as accessible as possible. Yeah, you, you know so well because you work with him every day, but uh, Chima Mbakwim over at uh, like Public mm-hmm. Health, I mean, he's always like a, a really, uh, you know, really accommodating gentleman and everything like that. You know, like he's really, really calm. But I mean, he was very emotional and he was stressing the fact that, you know, like um, Gov Guam now is trying to make uh, the process of getting vaccinated as frictionless to the end user as possible and everything like that. He said, you know, if you're on your way to work, you can get vaccinated. You know, like, again, you said, you know, we'll in certain situations, you can come to, to them. And that's, that's yes, what it's all about. Yes, we're to eliminate any and all barriers that may have been uh, restricting restricting someone from getting the, the vaccine. And so we've also gone into those vulnerable communities. And thanks to our, our private partnerships, most especially shout outs to the American Medical Center and GRMC uh, and, of, and the National Guard and 
all our different providers that have really stood up and they've really come out and helped us, you know, establish these, these outreaches um, at the, the community centers, at the churches, at the archdiocese began for stepping up and joining us in our effort to get vaccinated because we know our Manamco wanted to go back to church and their families. And so by reducing, uh, by increasing the number of people uh, protected, we're able to go back to normal sort slowly but surely. Mm. And ju- just to be fair, Chris, I, I I didn't know if you had the hard numbers about the uh, the Paseo vaccination clinic, but uh, I Don't actually have. covered a Little League game there. So I, I was at Paseo like for a little while on Saturday and everything, and it looked like the vaccination uh, tent that they had set up, there was a pretty good and consistent line there. So it looked like a lot of people were coming out. Right. As we streamline this process, people are, are hearing other stories because word of mouth, of course, is the most important way to get things out and to tell your friends and family that, you know, we definitely streamlined the process. It's easy, it's fast, it's mostly painless. If it's just a little sting, at least that was what I experienced. It's just like a, a mosquito bite. I think I've had more painful mosquito bites for those who are fearful of shots. And so it, it takes a few short minutes. Again, observation, you're, while you're being observed, you're, most people are just looking at their phones. Mm-hmm. I can scroll Instagram for 15 minutes without <laughs> realizing the time passing by and, I'm, and then I'm good to go. All right. So, so once again, can you give us the uh, the website? Because people in the comments right now are like, you know, like I want to know all about it. And the website has all of the information as far as you know what you have to yes. do, how you're going to be communicated. So, if you are tuning in, maybe you're listening and you're driving to work. That that website to enter for your chance to vax and win. That website is visitguam.com/vax. That's V-A-X. So it's visitguam.com/vax. Again, we want it to be as short as possible, but still a call to action uh, in our in our web URL because I know there's so many URLs we were pushing out in the beginning, right? Tiny URL, uh, all the different sites. But I know KUM has been doing a fantastic job at pushing out all our vaccine clinics. Several this week. Again, now we're at the Micronesia Mall, so you can actually get vaccinated and then go to Ross or get breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of things you could do. Um, so again, vax visit. Guam.com slash Vax for your chance to win $10,000 in cash or a car. And we'll be doing those raffle raffles every Wednesday at 721 on Governor, 721 a.m. on Governor's Facebook page. And so winners will be verified before verified uh, via the WebIZ database or via DOD or the National Guard. And once you're verified, the prize is yours. And for those 17 and under, of course, we have great prizes for you gift certificates, uh, dining dining experiences, and of course, electronics. Uh, as, as the governor said, all the pros, we have all the MacBook pros and, and the likes uh, so that our students can continue learning. And of course, everyone's online. Those are the, the really hot prizes right now. Absolutely. So it's, it's a win-win for everybody, ladies and gentlemen, for you personally and for our community. So Crystal, thanks so much. It seems like you guys are going to have a uh, have a pretty good meeting when you guys uh, get together at 830 and talk about some, uh, some pretty impressive uh, numbers. I know we, we've got Carl Gutierrez coming in, uh, and I'm sure he is going to uh, be very pleased to see what the numbers are so far. Over 19,000 Guamanians have now used this website and have registered for uh, at least what is going to be the first giveaway for this promotion on June the 16th, so a week from this Wednesday. Right. We wanted to give enough people uh, enough time for people to log on or get their first vaccine before our first entry. Uh, before our first giveaway, I'm sorry, on Wednesday, June 16th. So you got time. Maybe you can get the J&J if you want the one and done shot. You're el- then you're eligible to enter. Or you can get the Pfizer or Moderna. And then once you get your second shot, you can go online and log on. And so I hope that the people of Guam really respond to this, that when they get their vaccine, they go on, they log on. Again, visit guam.com slash V-A-X for your chance to win vaccine win. And thank you to the people of Guam for just, you know, doing their part to protect one another. Overall, that's the goal. It's not the cash or the car. It's that we protect one another and that we are able to combat COVID and continue to continue the spread. So thank you to KUAM and to all our media partners. Okay. And you know how much of a data dork I am, Chris. So I'm probably going to be uh, messaging you throughout the day and seeing when, when, when we do break 30,000. Yeah. <laughs> but actually on that, on that note, are you guys going to have some sort of like maybe like a thermometer or, you know, some sort of graphic that shows like where we yes. are? Yes. Well, we can, we're, we're developing that right now, a meter of sorts, so you can not only see our progress um, to our goal, right? So we're at 83,000 people on Guam vaccinated today, but also uh, how close are we to that 80%, um, that 80% goal, herd immunity. Mm-hmm. Again, 80, we want to achieve full vaccination of 80% of Guam's adult population. So let's be clear, 80% of our adult population equals to 96,000 shots in arms. 
So we need about 13,000 or so more people to get some shots and we would have achieved herd immunity. Again, this is a very realistic goal for liberation. We're trying to reach this by July 21, 2021. Guam's liberation, our 77th liberation from uh, Japanese enemy forces. So we've got a little bit more than six weeks, my friends, to get this done. So go out, get your shot and make sure to register at visitguam.com slash VAX. Crystal, thank you so much. Have a wonderful morning and congrat congratulations at your success so far. <sighs> Thanks. I know this. Is, well, I'm, I'm not going to say what you and I were chatting about privately and everything, but you said this was actually quite quite a difficult promotion to put together, like a lot of moving parts, a lot of balls in the air and everything. But the fact that you guys like uh, pulled it off and got it up and running and everything like that is, is a good testament for our community. Again, very exciting times. And we, we look forward to resuming some sense of normalcy very soon. All right. Right on. Have a good morning. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye bye. Crystal Pacos and Augustine from the governor's office. We are going to take a break, everybody. And when we come back, we're going to say a few words and then jump on TV for those of you watching on broadcast. So stay tuned. The link continues right after this. KUAM Communications continues our perpetuation of our Samoro culture, language, and heritage with features available to our listening and viewing audience, including streaming of Samoro music 24 hours per day on Isla Digital Radio on KUAM.com and the KUAM News app. Samoro News Update, weekdays on the link and the KUAM News YouTube channel. Conversations about life in our Samoro language podcast with Tosta Paku with Kin Conception. Seasonal specials, shows, and other features highlighting the beauty of our language, culture, and history. It's a new era of our continued commitment to our tomorrow heritage. Isla, watch, listen, stream. Viva Isla! Listen, watch, and learn from the daily Tomorrow News updates from KUAM News. Catch them on the link during the 8 o'clock hour, streaming online on Isla Radio, or on the KUAM News YouTube channel for your convenience. Tune in and stay informed, all while preserving our precious culture through the daily use of our native Tomorrow language. Tomorrow News updates are brought to you by your familia at First Hawaiian Bank. My whole family is fully vaccinated because we understand the importance of it. I've seen my daughter, her boyfriend, and friends endure COVID, and I've lost family members because of the virus. I chose to get vaccinated to protect those around me, and most importantly, because of my parents. I'm Jonah Gancharfris, KUAM senior producer, and I'm a proud member of the vaccination. Join the vaccination, scan and plan. For more information, go to KUAM.com. The relationship between Guam and Manila, Philippines is undeniable as we share similar cultural traditions, history, and heritage with generations of Filipinos calling Guam home. KUAM presents a monthly look at the capital city featuring in-depth and engaging interviews on everything from medical tourism to new business and government leaders. Veteran newscaster Nestor Lecanto delivers Beyond Our Borders. This special program is brought to you by the Bank of Guam and KFC. Get the job done the right way by getting the right stuff at East West Rental Center. With years of experience helping builders, we definitely got what you need. Call 646-1463 or visit us in Upper Tumon. Open Monday to Saturday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. is a human necessity, one we need today more than ever. And with the new First Hawaiian Bank mobile app, you can stay just as connected to your finances. And it all starts with yes. 
After a year with so many games and events delayed or unplayed, the world is ready for anything and everything in the world of sports. KUAM Communications is ready with more games, more championships, and more specials that are guaranteed to bring out the fan in you. Don't miss a minute of gameplay from NBC on KUAM TV 8 or from CBS on KUAM TV 11. Every month, we'll bring you the action and excitement. Brought to you locally by Michelob Ultra, Superior Light Beer, Marianas Irrigation and Landscape, and Docomo Pacific. Just more more great reasons to tune in and turn on so you'll fall in love with TV again with the best from KUAM Communications. Catch SportsLink on the KUAM News Morning Show, The Link, every Friday to hear about the latest in sports news, game schedules, athlete profiles, and more. SportsLink, brought to you each week by Cure Alkaline Water, airs every Friday across the multimedia platforms of KUAM. Tune into the broadcast on Breeze 93.9 FM on KUAM TV 11, live streaming through the KUAM News Facebook page, or view highlights on YouTube, KUAM News Facebook, and Instagram. SportsLink is hosted by Dave Delgado through KUAM Sports, and he will make sure that everyone knows what is happening on the field in the gyms, and everywhere in between. Looking for TV schedules, upcoming sports, or special presentations, or what you may have missed over the busy week you had? Well, look no further than KOAM Digital Digest. This weekly email newsletter puts all kinds of information in the hands of subscribers each and every week. Just subscribe, and we will make sure you keep up with your favorites and stay informed and entertained throughout it all. Go to KOAM.com, click on the newsletter tab, give us your email address, and you are all set. Brought to you in digital partnership with King's Restaurant and Ruby Tuesday Guam. It's the KOM Digital Digest, your weekly guide to the latest information and best entertainment on the stations and platforms of KUAM. Everybody, we are just moments away from jumping on to KUAM TV. If you're waking up with us, making breakfast, getting coffee, uh, and you want to stay tuned because Governor Carl Gutierrez, former Governor Carl Gutierrez, he's now the GVB president. He will be talking about his thoughts on the Vax to Win uh, promotion. And then we are going to talk at 9 o'clock with several representatives and leaders of the 33rd Guam Youth Congress about what they think about the American recovery plan and what is going on. We're also going to find out what's up with the weather. Looks good outside at the moment, but will it stay that way? Landon Idle has got all the information when we come right back, right here on the link. Right on uh, 759. Sorry, that sounded like we were going to commercial break. Again. I know. <laughs> I'm not good at this kind of thing. I'm, hey, you're doing fine, bro. Uh, you, Don't worry. You're, you're the absolute greatest. You, you got 25 years of like, radio all experience. Right, I'm, okay. I'm the newbie here. Here we go. Let's do it. Happy Monday. Monday. Whoa. Let's go, Lunas. My name is Chris. I'm Jason. Many, many, many 
thousands of you watching right now over a variety of platforms, listening to us on 93.9 The Breeze, watching us on KUM TV. Probably a certain part of you are many of the 19,000 of you, more than 19,000 of you who have registered for GVB's Vax to Win promotion. So next Wednesday is going to be a big day for you guys, so make sure to tune, tune into the link because we're going to be showing you who the first winner is. Right, and so they're uh, basically going to announce it on the governor's uh, Facebook uh, page via Facebook Live 721 every Wednesday starting next Wednesday yep. all the way until uh, Liberation, correct? Yep, and then we'll pipe that in here so you guys can see it. You know, you won't have to jump to another Facebook page or get, go out and buy another device just so you can see who wins. We'll make it <laughs> convenient for you guys. Yeah, we will. You guys can hang with your Link fam here and then see if you win. And we hope you do win. Best of luck to you. But right. remember, to win, you got to enter. So go to visitguam.com slash VAX. All right. Uh, Serena Salas-Mantanani is uh, on uh, leave attending to some family matters in uh, Las Vegas, but she'll be joining the show via Zoom. And she did land safely, and she she made like a little video that she Let's wants to Let's go ahead and play that, guys. Yeah, okay. Uh, so so we're, yeah, we'll just catch up with uh, Serena Salas-Mantanani. I mean, she filmed everything, and she was able to, <laughs> to document her journey uh, over to the States in this little uh, clip here for the Link fam. Good morning. So as many of you know, um, my dad has been feeling really ill over the last uh, couple of months, and so I am going on another trip to go be with him because he's been asking for me, and... Uh, so I wanted to give you guys a look at what it's like if you are traveling um, to the States. And I went to the airport around five o'clock in the morning. And as you can see, the lines were super long. And there's a number of different um, checks that you gotta go through once you finally check in, which took me almost an hour and a half, almost two hours. And I got there at five and my flight left at um, seven so it took me a long time to get through all of the different checkpoints I downloaded the Hawaii safe travels um, um, I went to their website and got the QR code um, finally when I landed in Hawaii more lines um, of course you have to take down your luggage check it back in then you go back through TSA uh, you can see in the videos a lot of people traveling I landed in Denver, uh, same thing, a lot of people in Denver, um, even on the planes, um, the different connecting flights I was on, it was just a lot of people. Finally made it to Vegas, um, where I am currently going to be uh, preparing to go see my dad. He has no idea that I'm here, I surprised my mom this morning uh, after I landed. So um, I will be on the link, but I'll just be teleworking here from Vegas so that I could uh, spend time with my family. I'm going out to, to Sabrina and her family uh, this morning. It's 8.04. Uh, since Sabrina's uh, not on the show today, that means Jason Salas uh, will be doing the KU Wave News update uh, for this hour, uh, which includes our work week weather brought to you by Docomo Pacific and news in Chamorro with Uncle Ken brought to you by First Hawaiian Bank. And now with the very latest from the KUAM News team, Jason Salas, good morning. Uh, good morning and good morning, Guam. And of course, we unfortunately do start on a melancholy note as the Guam Police Department, as we reported yesterday, is actively searching for a person of interest connected to yesterday's death investigation. The incident did occur at the Hotel Mayana over in Tamuning with a 39-year-old female having been transported to the Guam Memorial Hospital, having sustained multiple lacerations and later pronounced dead by attending physicians. Additionally, a 19-year-old female victim was transported to the Guam Regional Medical City for treatment and care. Let's go back to the newsroom now where our Tyler Matanani is standing by and she has a glimpse of everything that's happening on the island this morning. Point and send half a day, everyone. I'm Tyler Matsunani with your headlines here on The Link. The government is offering a chance to win $10,000 cash or a brand new car just for getting vaccinated. Governor Leon Guerrero announced the incentive program Friday as part of her effort to reach an 80% COVID vaccination rate and herd immunity by July 21st. 
to show our thanks, our office, in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau, is proud to announce an incentive program we are calling Vax and Win for all our vaccinated Guam residents. Starting June 16, and every Wednesday leading up to Guam celebration on July 21st, residents 18 years of age or older who received their COVID-19 vaccine on Guam are eligible to win either $10,000 in cash or a brand new car. To be clear, that means 10,000 cash and a different new car every week for six weeks, starting with the first drawing on June 16th. The goal is to entice those who still haven't been vaccinated, such as the single largest demographic, the Micronesian community. I just met with the Council General uh, Felipe, and she too is saying that she's seeing an increase in the uh, numbers of people vaccinated uh, in the Micronesian community. So far, a little less than 83,000 have been vaccinated. The goal is to reach herd immunity at 96,000. That means we need about 13,000 vaccinations by the July 21st Operation Liberate Guam deadline. I really still strongly believe that once we get there, we will return to uh, more of a normal uh, lifestyle. To register, go to the GVB website, visit guam.com slash VAX, VAX. Adloop says that within an hour of the announcement, more than 500 had already signed up. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Separately, the lieutenant governor announced there will be fireworks on Liberation Day and a first ever drone light show. The public weighed in Friday on the legislature's proposed spending plan for ARP fund funds. A hearing was held on a resolution that mirrors the priority list approved by the senators and was presented to the governor in a meeting at Adeloup in May. The testimony by both private and public sector representatives was divided between those that believe the money should go mostly to direct public assistance and those that think it's better spent on lasting improvements and in infrastructure that will provide benefits over the long run. You know, it's not only about government workers, about those people at the grocery, security guards, gas attendants, hardware store workers, pharmacy workers, restaurant workers, the media, that they are working every day to uh, spread the news. You know, and other essential businesses that were told to open during the pandemic. But give them something. We believe that the $7 million, not only for heavy equipment, to, to continue to support and maintain the maintenance and the beautification of the villages, but also to actually go in and do a one-time cleanup, including the illegal dumping sites that most of the villages face. Private health care workers are tired too and they need to know that the government appreciates everything they did for the community. Please add a provision in your resolution, however way you see fit, to include private clinics too. Co-sponsor Minority Leader Chris Duenas compared it to the Simon biblical speaker. parable um, of I the just fish want to and the fishermen. We have to, I think, have balance to our proposals going forward. Even if we set aside this entire $600 million, that would be one-fourth of what FPUC and PUA has been over the last two years. I want to give a fish, and I want to give a fishing pole. And fellow sponsor, Speaker Therese Terlahi says it's a start. As I've stated before, this $604 million in federal funds is an unprecedented amount of funding. It's close to the entire budget of the government of Guam. So this is just the beginning, but it's my goal to ensure that we work together, we collaborate to ensure that this process as transparent as possible. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. About 72% of the prison population has now been fully vaccinated with the single dose of Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine. Department of Corrections spokesperson Major Anton Uggen says that's a total of 400 of 557 inmates. We are as they educate the inmates and try to encourage them to uh, get vaccinated. Some, you know, some still are being resistant, but we are continuing to move forward. 
Again, previously told KUAM their goal is 85% or more prisoners to be vaccinated. He added that about 56% of DOC staff are fully vaccinated and they're working to increase the number. That's it for now. We'll see you all at 6 tonight on Primetime. Thanks, Ty. Isaiah Ogin has our next story in environmental headlines. As many coconut trees on Guam, Hawaii, and Luta have been affected by the coconut rhino beetle. Fortunately, a new monitoring system that will help reduce the issue has been developed by a scholar over at the University of Guam. A survey conducted recently by the University of Guam states that 23% of Guam's coconut palms, or one in five, show signs of attack by coconut rhinoceros beetles. In efforts to control the rhino beetle problem on Guam, Dr. Aubrey Moore, an entomologist at UOG, came up with a new survey method that would help prevent damage from the pest. The rhino beetle you may have come across on the island is the coconut rhinoceros beetle, biotype G, meaning it behaves differently from the normal rhino beetles, and G is for Guam because it was discovered here on the island in 2007. Dr. Moore says that whenever you are trying to control an issue, you must keep records of them. In the past, a way observers monitored was to use 2,000 pheromone traps, also known as the barrel traps across the island. However, those were blown away by Typhoon Dolphin in 2015. They weren't able to reestablish that monitoring system, but still had to record what rhino beetles do. So instead of reusing an outdated system, Moore developed a new monitoring method. I decided, well, let's look at what we're really trying to do, and that's prevent damage from the rhino beetle. So let's look at the, the changes in rhino beetle damage over time. And that's the whole idea of this, this schema, this survey method that we developed. This particular method is established everywhere rhino beetles are being surveyed. The CRB damage survey is used by taking high definition digital images recorded along roadsides of all major routes at a rate of one per second by a smartphone attached to a vehicle with a magnetic device mount angled at 15 degrees. Then in the lab, a computer program developed using an artificial intelligence technique called deep learning examines every image to identify all the coconut palms, measure the CRB damage to each, and then generates an interactive map. The new method is way better because the whole island will be covered in two days. Dr. Moore shares ways you can identify a tree that has been affected by a rhino beetle. The adults, both the males and females, mm -hmm. bore in to feed on the sap. When they do that, there's a borehole. Okay. Okay, and it's about this big, about an inch in diameter. Mm -hmm. uh, often you don't see them because the boreholes are started behind the, uh, the outer fronds. Mm -hmm. But when those fronds fall off, you'll see the borehole in the stem or in uh, the petiole, the, the base of the frond that fell off. He added that a hooked wire can be used to extract and destroy rhinoceros beetles adults feeding in coconut trees, further stating that if you stop CRB damage even after it being affected badly, the tree will heal on its own. The survey will be done by monthly and the data will continue to be used to measure changes in damage in response to CRB pest control activities. Moore's work on monitoring CRB damage in Guam is supported by grants from the U.S. Department of the Interior, Office of Insular Affairs, and the U.S. Forest Service. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahu C. Isaiah Uggen. And with your island news headlines in our native tongue, here's Uncle King Conception with your tomorrow news update, sponsored by the fine folks at First Hawaiian Bank. When it's an update to get some to the tomorrow, you need KUAM News. When you send any family and meet you, give First Hawaiian Bank. My best ni policia di fina itan dun tentai nebi andus na palawan di Mayana Hotel na apartment gita tamuning. Man stabe Guam Police Department Criminal Investigation Division gihi kita luan in the bengu. Mapong di kwa tun 119 ni koloda merito na crime tape sa adzun na matsuse di fina itai. Iman testigo sa masangani KUM News na malita toto palawan makakat gai di stretcher para guati gi ambulance. Za matsotso gui ni medics CPR kita guita. Sigoni GPD makoni palawan para Guam Memorial Hospital za ma pronuncia na mata gi dispues. Mata titi je istin story ni KUAM. I segundo na asunto, marista si Vance Jared Bamba, za fafana misdemeanor na inatake na inataka za nampitun familia. Segundo complain ni magistrate, gidea unu gi hunyu, ha report di biktima gi polisia, na ketsa gi domingo i gima a nai duru finagas ni todi dos kanainya si Bamba, ki fasunya i palaan, mentre sa oho gi un dos meses sa na idat neni. Gi durante na zuna inataka, fakas kun todi i neni si Bamba. Pero ang rato po mara sa bamba sa seri biktima para upatawasing gilu kama pesa tu talo na tutuhon po maniti palawon gilu suto mus humano ay biktima na maigo sa bamba ane malmati polisya maripara ilugahaga tampok pok gitori ros bandani fasunya ay biktima 
Mari para loko ina ine ni din riru diagapa na senti dunia. Ma bisui bekte ma nau fanhano para mediku. Ane mari konosi ni tato Guam Fire Department. Sigoni koti, si bamba sangani un official polisiana ma maulo gui zanu miso gui zanu mati gui. Nui bidanya. I mas, a fit my delegado Michael San Nicolas a jikarta para i President Biden. Zan a keeping our promises working group. Ni para ma evacuate a jik Afghan na tato siya. Da ma considera da na para ma na fanyaga guahan. A jik yu fanhano para otro banda. Mas especial e kata sa mga sauna ay jiplan ng evacuation ng sumano guahan ng mga siguro na adyan ng Afghan refugees sa estaman mabakuna sa mga afanyagi gilugan ni Pernitehi Komunitidad gini ni COVID-19. Ilingga si San Nicolas na giniha ay gialat sa gini Memorial Day a hasu i parentes niya ay gini San Nicolas na banda si Major Henry San Nicolas of CR ng mata gini sa Afghanistan na nadyo loko siya sa mga guong guahan sa ni Micronesia. Ma malago sempre esti siya na para tatsogu esti. Para tatsogi to din na sinata para ta onra da ta komiti siya i sacrificion niya para u defendi nasyon da ni Linibri. Linga masa esti ga ipag u tempota para ta opi obligasyon ta da para ta agang to di tao to guahan siya da mafata Amerika da ni mundo na hita guini. Sa tayo niko kita gigya mo na ifesata para sa gan Linibri esti i da guahan. Nyo tumun na tikulu Siya timas na may hodi sengsong siya sa merisibi permit na dos na milaza para GG3 Commitment Batch Program pa G3C. Azu siya na milaza pa badges sa tumilong sa nasi programa ni United Nations in Sustainable Development Goals para no poverty and no hunger. No significa ite to i may hod siya sa kumintin niya para este na problema gi isang tsuniya. I G3C na programa sa pati gi azi Island White Guam Green Growth na toto. Yung nagduda ni University of Guam, Center for Island Sustainability, ni Marikognisya, na numapremu business siya, organisasyon, sa gana edukasyon, sa grupong komunitidad, numapatiti na spraktikong sinistenin na tumilang na ni Guam Green Growth Action Framework na UN Sustainable Development Goals. E programa sa para 5 anos na tempo, na tutuun gwe gie milata siya para ipinebli, na nininalang. Esta hulu gidi si sete na Sustainable Development Goals. Ma makumbida may hot siya para tafta ni man manadapta Jadi saya sengsung piti, jadi tu hargannya dan sedahannya menmanai premium. Nui permit dos nama laut lagi durante 2021 conference on island sustainability di Abrid. Ia sengsung mung-mung tu tu mighty mengilau hargat zonia humatak enalahan dan salam pago sama merekognisa dan melazan niya di dia ketot segi maju. Pada KUAM News, Gosikin Conception. Ia suatu infinit samuru sa perniagaan dan ina fatu ni familia mizu di First Hawaiian Bank. is a human necessity, one we need today more than ever. And with the new First Hawaiian Bank mobile app, you can stay just as connected to your finances. And it all starts with yes. All right, thank you, 819. Thank you to First Hawaiian Bank for sponsoring our Tomorrow News. And now let's head into the K-Wave News Zoom Room. We're uh, standing by, Jason. Yeah, Landon Island with the National Weather Service uh, giving us an ad hoc tour. Fittingly, as soon as he comes in, it starts to rain. That must be a sign. Landon, Landon you're yeah. good, man. I, I guess you can make that happen. <laughs> yeah, I was just uh, looking out my windows. Like, yeah, yeah, there's that shower. Like, there's the uh, airport control tower right over there in the main passenger terminals over there. And y'all are just on the other side down the hill past the overpass. So, yeah, that's sitting right on top of you. But everywhere else, it's just uh, kind of a overcast uh, as the truck pulls into our driveway here. But... Yeah, this is be all clearing out later today. So let me go into my office right quick. So just seeing spotty showers out here this morning as we start out our Monday. No, it's it's coming down pretty hard here in uh, in Harmon, man. Yeah, yeah, y'all are uh, the highlight right now for the morning. So uh, a lot of people are pretty dry out there. And let me show you the visible. Here we go. So not much out there except for these spotty showers. And y'all are the lucky ones. Looks like. Uh, central uh, Guam, primarily along the airport and northward to Dededo, Jigo, NCS, GRMC, uh, Anderson Air Force Base, you all be getting that shower. And then elsewhere, spottier showers to the south. So this would be moving all across the island in the next uh, half hour to an hour. But behind that, not much. You just see a lot of uh, emptiness, a lot of 
drier weather behind that to the east. That's going to be the theme for the remainder of the week. And once we zoom out, there's really not much going on upstream of us as well. All the moisture, the showers and thunderstorms, that's all well to our south again. We have several pulses of tropical waves down there, but nothing poised for development in our region. That's the good news for folks, especially in Yap and Plow, where they've seen the action for the last month and a half with uh, Sergei and then Choi Wan. I think it was like early last week, which gave us some showers. Um, but that's about it. So go ahead and queue up the slides, Jason, and we'll start from the top. It's actually a pretty dull day out there, which is not bad in the world of weather. Uh, no headlines to speak of. We have a moderate risk of rip currents out there across Guam and the CNMI along east-facing reefs, and the Guam fire danger is moderate. That's going to continue at least for the next several days. If we don't get any significant rainfall, then that will probably creep up gradually, but it's just a matter of time before we get more showers in the region. The next slide. Um, Yes, body showers. Temperature 77 at the last hour here at the Guam International Airport. The winds were nearly calm across the region, east at three miles per hour here at Guam and seven miles per hour at Saipan. We're going to see this trend continue for the next several days through most of the week, and that could have some implications for weather around Wednesday and Thursday. And I'm watching the video from your parking lot at the studios. That's a beautiful <laughs> downpour. I love watching that. You know, I, I wish we had that action over here right now. <laughs> but the rainfall, yesterday we had 0 0.03 inches. And so for the month, we are down just a little bit for the month, uh, but it's still early in the game. Uh, and for the rainfall for the year, we are still a couple inches below normal for the year, but you are going to be measuring up there at the studio. So you yeah, are talking about the Connecticut whalers. And this is the next slide, the Connecticut whalers. I'm like, that sounds familiar. And I'm like, I think that's the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, and sure yeah, enough, rub it in. that is the Carolina Hurricanes. They're and... always going to be the Hartford Whalers, buddy. Come on now. <laughs> you guys got you guys got the ring. Yeah. We got we got the coolest sports logo I that was ever invented. I got the ring. That was my first season with the Carolina Hurricanes. My brother and I, we worked there after college, and we were there for almost three years. And so this larger picture, that's Brandon. He was the bartender in the suite, uh, one of the luxury suites. And it was the Edmonton Oilers from Canada. They were the team we were fighting against for the Stanley Cup championship. And so we had the suite of all the ritzy Edmonton Oilers, and it was a quiet suite at the end of the night. So yeah, it was quite a celebrative uh, event. The pictures to the left, that's us in the penalty box, of course. Well, bad forecasting. Yeah, I don't, no, I don't notably know. Notably we without Wayne Gretzky box. by that point. <laughs> without Wayne Gretzky, of yeah. course. And then we had a snowman. So every once in a while we get to go uh, and skate on the ice rink every Christmas. So that was a great time. Now, from the hurricanes, we're going to go into the tropical cyclones on the next slide. And as I mentioned last week, we are in typhoon preparedness month, and that's for the month of June. So does that mean we're going to have a lot of action this month? Not this necessarily, but it just means this is where we revisit our preparedness plans. We understand the aspects of tropical cyclones, how they form the warning process and how to be prepared to mitigate our losses. And that's what we at the National Weather Service, we want to do to make sure our population is prepared and ready for whatever nation th the nature throws at us. Tropical cyclones, that is an encompassing term to include tropical depression, tropical storm, typhoon, and super typhoons. And these are those criteria based on the wind intensity. So once we have an invest area that we're watching with the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, that has a numbering series of 90 to 99. That's affixed to W for the West Pacific. Once that has been developed and reaches the intensity of tropical depression, that's when the 90s number disappears and goes to something like 04W or 05W. That's the number of storms in the basin beginning in January 1st. So Choi Wan was our fourth uh, warned on system that was tropical depression and then tropical storm Choi Wan. Our next storm will be number 05W after it's been an invest area. Once it graduates the category, it goes from depression, tropical storm, typhoon, and then on up to the worst of storms, the super typhoon. And some climatology, I, I get asked this all the time. What's our typhoon season? And well, most people link it to like Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific typhoon season that begins 
uh, the hurricane season in the Atlantic beginning on June 1 and goes on through November 31. Well, we have a busy period of the year, and that's typically for us July, August, September, October, November, but we don't like to say we have a typhoon season. We have a busier time of the year, but they can occur any time of the year. If you remember back to 2019, February, we had super typhoon Wootip, and somebody, a number of people said, when was the last time we had a super typhoon in the month of February? Well, it was the previous year. There was a uh, super typhoon in the West Pacific, just east of Guam. It developed north of Pompeii. It was a very short-lived event, moving generally northward. It affected no one, so it was very little talked about because that track did not threaten Guam at the time. And it reached a peak intensity of a super typhoon status for about six hours and then eventually weakened pretty rapidly until it met its demise well east of Guam in the CNMI. So very few people heard about that one. Very few people paid attention to it. And again, this just drives some of the fact that we can have these systems all throughout the year. The next slide, the first slide shows all the tropical cyclones, that's depression, storms, and typhoons. The next slide includes typhoons only within one, two, and three degrees from Guam. And this is the climatology from 1945 through September 2018. As you can see in this plot, those typhoons occur in February, March. They pop up a little bit higher in April and May, especially within three degrees of Guam. And then June, it, it bottoms out. So we're kind of in a, a lull of the year for typhoons. And then it starts going up in July, August, September, and our peak period is October, November. And then it starts falling again in December. So again, we cannot let our guard down anytime throughout the year. So the next slide, that shows our Facebook post uh, that was posted yesterday showing those dry conditions across Guam and the CNMI, but much more moisture to our south across Western Micronesia, Chuuk, Pompeii, and Koshrai. That's all going to bubble up along and keep to our south uh, with no threats to us as it moves generally west. And going to their satellite data, those winds are light across the region. So you see the light blues across Guam and Saipan. Those are five to 10 so knots of wind over the water. And that's going to be a theme for the rest of the week with the stronger winds, more or less in the open ocean to our east and along 10 degrees north latitude. Now that's going to have implications for us because we can't get into our island convective event. So next slide that shows that uh, diurnal cycle. You have the sea breeze during the day and the land breeze at night. If these winds lighten up enough, we can see these uh, daytime heating of the island mass generate some showers and thunderstorms over the island with a light trade wind that'll push the stuff along western Guam like Agate, Pedi, uh, Tumon Bay, NCS area, and then into the western coastal waters of Guam. And so this is the possibility that we're looking at around Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So keep up to date to our forecast in case these things develop. Again, in these scenarios, not everybody sees the action during the day. It's more spotty in nature, and it can drop locally heavy rainfall in small areas that are under the gun with that. And then like a bad relationship, it breaks up uh, shortly after it starts. And so that's the cycle we're going to be looking at possibly Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Also with the light winds, our seas and surf will be following falling through the next several days. Right now we're looking at a combined seas of two to four feet, primarily at east well of two to three feet. That's going to fall just a little bit uh, for much of the week. We're going to have a low risk of rip current. So if you like to go out there and spearfish, this would be a great week for it. Um, even on the eastern reefs where it's typically dangerous with those trade wind swell and wind waves. So it's going to be a beautiful week for water activities. Um, but again, check the weather forecast because things can develop. Last slide. This is where we look at for the rest of the week. Not bad, mostly sunny to partly cloudy most every day, but I put that asterisk for mid midweek because we could see the isolated thunderstorms and heavier showers in the afternoon hours of Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Right now, our forecast does not reflect that until we get more information and a better feel for how this could evolve. So that's all I've got for you today. Okay, and hang on one Beautiful sec, week. Landon, because I got, I got something for you since you were uh, talking smack about hockey just a second ago <laughs> okay if you ch i'm gonna bring this picture up here real quick go ahead sir so if you check your whatsapp i just sent this to you but uh there you go hartford whalers best sports logo ever created and fittingly that was a uh, crystal who we had on the show earlier 
<laughs> so I know you want to throw your Carolina Hurricanes at us. You know, your three years of history, and you guys won the Stanley Cup. All due respect, but for me, they're always going to be the Whalers. <laughs> I love my Whalers. Yeah, it, it'll always be the Carolina Hurricanes for me. Oh, boy. Um, they were superior. <laughs> we're going to have to agree to disagree on that one, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> And don't mess with the hurricanes. Uh, there yeah. you go. <laughs> well, whalers, whalers are nothing to sneeze at either. So, you know, we'll, we'll talk sports some other day. But always good to hear from you, man. Always great to see y'all and enjoy the showers. I, I, I'm thinking it's probably drier over there by now. Am I correct? Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's overcast right now. But I uh, see Mr. Sun's uh, right around the corner. So we are going to yeah, take a commercial break. Oops. It's definitely bright out there now. Oh, good. Well, you know, uh, we're, you're going to get our clouds in about 20 seconds, as is customary on Guam. But <laughs> we're going to take a break, my friends. And when we come back, we are going to GVB, where former Governor Carl Gutierrez and Nadine Leon Guerrero are standing by. And we're going to talk about the Vax to Win promotion and a whole lot more when the link continues right here on KUAM. Uno Go, delivering meals from your favorite restaurants and more, including delivering sodas and adult beverages from the Bottle Shack. Visit uno-go.com or download the app today. Also, follow them on Instagram and Facebook. KUAM's multi-platform morning show, The Link, just got a little more delicious with Feed Me Fridays. Chris, Sabrina, Jason, and the rest of the morning crew will take some time each Friday to talk food, taste food, and bring you all the latest and greatest in food from King's Restaurants and Ruby Tuesday Guam, old faves, new hits, and everything on the menu in between. It's Feed Me Fridays on The Link. I decided to get vaccinated because I knew that it was the only way to keep myself, my family, friends, and everyone safe. And it was also my way of contributing to the fight against COVID-19. And I also encourage everyone out there, and especially those in the FSM communities here on Guam, to do your part and get vaccinated. My name is Victorious Flan, and I am a proud member of the vaccination. Join the vaccination. Scan and plan. For more information, go to KUAM.com. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. June makes the best malasadas in Hawaii, a fact not lost on Daryl, whose brother Byron is cooking the onaga he caught at a secret fishing spot with his girlfriend Malia, who used to work for the Shave Ice Guy, whose second cousin Vince drives the school bus ridden by Kalei, whose auntie makes the best malasadas in Hawaii. Everything here is connected, and with the new First Hawaiian Bank mobile app, you can stay just as connected to your finances, and it all starts with yes. KUAM Communications continues our perpetuation of our Samoro culture, language, and heritage with features available to our listening and viewing audience including streaming of Samoro music 24 hours per day on Isla Digital Radio on KUAM.com and the KUAM News app. Samoro News Update, weekdays on the link and the KUAM News YouTube channel. Conversations about life in our Samoro language podcast with Tosta Paku with Kin Conception. Seasonal specials, shows and other features highlighting the beauty of our language, culture, and history. It's a new era of our continued commitment to our tomorrow heritage. Isla, watch, listen, stream. Viva Isla! Chris and Sabrina with The Link. The Link. Here on Breeze 93.9 FM. <laughs> Our next uh, interview, we got a big KUAM birthday. 
Going on to our great friend, Andy Wheeler. Hey, Andy's birthday. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that sounded like a truck horn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're in tune. <laughs> people watching, people listening right now on the radio are like, hey, hey, hey. Hey, where's Sabrina? Yeah, construction? Uh, Sabrina usually provides a higher note, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's all bass. Here we go. <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Andy. And everyone else whose birthday is today, too. Happy birthday to you. May the dear Lord bless you. May the dear Lord bless you. May the dear Lord bless Andy. And everyone else whose birthday is today, too. Happy birthday to you. Happy right. birthday, Andy. Right on, my friend. Uh, and with that, your morning is officially started, and you're just uh, cruising into the office right now and just firing up the link on whatever device you are, listening to us on the radio. You may notice that uh, it's a good day as far as the marketing people over at the Guam Visitors Bureau because they have a very, very favorable response from the community as far as their Vax to Win uh, promotion, and we have former Governor Carl Gutierrez, the president of GVB, and Nadine Leon Guerrero, the director of global marketing for GVB. So, Gov and Nadine, half a day, and congratulations on over 19,000 people, at least as of 730, uh, having now registered for the promotion. That's a phenomenal number. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, everyone at KUAM, the link. Uh, yep, Nadine is here with me. Uh, she is why GVB uh, is uh, doing such a good job because of professionals like her. <laughs> Nadine, I, you know, I've, I've known you for a while and, you know, like I've seen you guys do a, like a lot of different integrated marketing campaigns over the years. And obviously, you know, um, the true metal of, of any marketing promotion is one, how many people it registers, but then two, the number of people that actually participate and respond and engage and everything like that. So what are your thoughts on the fact that we're probably going to break 20,000 uh, at registrants uh, for this uh, campaign, okay. probably uh, before the top of the hour. Yeah, I, I would say that I was about to say we should break that by nine by nine a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think everybody really on the island has been doing a great job and doing their part. Uh, we just need to push a little bit more. There's still some people out there that uh, need convincing, and and I think working together, uh, we can get we can reach the eighty percent goal that we're trying to reach for liberation. Yeah, as I understand it from uh, some of my friends at Adaloop, um, it wasn't necessarily the whole concept of, you know, doing like an incentive based promotion to try and, uh, you know, get that last 10 percent, which, you know, the physician advisory group has told us, you know, is going to be the very, very challenging 10 percent because they're, they're the ones who may be like a little scared or for whatever reason hesitant about getting vaccinated. Um, you weren't exactly following the model that like a lot of uh, state governments are doing where, you know, where they're giving away, you know, like we, we've been saying a lot of times, West Virginia is giving away uh, rifles and trucks or things like that. But, you know, this was something that you guys came up completely independently on your own, right? Yeah, so um, Gov had an idea and, uh, and Gov Young Guerrero working together wanted to really, uh, I guess you want to say reward the island uh, for, for doing its part and um, just being able to pull all of this together it's at uh, such a time when the island needed some positive news. We're just trying to move forward with it. Mm -hmm. No, uh, yeah. you know, I was messaging Crystal, and I, I remember, Gov, um, right after you were involved in the press conference, obviously, on Friday afternoon, and you guys went on about 2.15 by 3.30. They already said 500 people had... Uh, had registered themselves by 5 p.m. There were about 2,000. The next morning, there were 12,000. And now we're well over uh, 19,000. And, you know, you've been involved, Gov, in, you know, like getting the word out, you know, getting people um, in your way of thinking, you know, in all, in all the various uh, times you've run for public office. So what are your thoughts on maybe some of the, the community's reaction to this? Well, I, I think what will work, you know, a lot is, is the, uh, the peer pressure. People in the, even in your neighborhoods, uh, never mind just family pressure. Everybody next door is not vaccinated. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, uh, a little bit of uh, embarrassing people, <laughs> you know, to get out there and do it on a personal basis, as we have done uh, to our neighbors. And uh, I drove them to get their vaccination. It's just that they, it's out of sight, out of, out of mind, out of, out of whatever it is that mm -hmm. they're not thinking about it. And so as long as 
KUAM, the link, and the different talk shows continue to remind the people that we're, you know, as you're doing right now, Jason, you guys are hyping up the, 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 the numbers. And I think it excites people themselves and they probably want to be part of that number and that growing number. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are uh, advertising, we are marketing. That's what Nadine is doing. We are reaching out to the uh, the media locally and also our partners at Chamber of Commerce and the, the uh, Hotel and Restaurant Association. They are out there trying to do their best uh, in promoting uh, even even as we as we put up our our WTTC uh, safe uh, uh, cards and uh, and a safe Guam safe card on the restaurants, people are reminded that uh, you know it'd be a lot easier if we all get vaccinated. We tell the store owners to say that. We tell the hoteliers to say that. The restaurateurs are saying that. So the more we talk about it, the more they uh, they'll realize that everybody around them is vaccinated and they're not. Mm hmm. I, I actually think there's a whole lot of merit to, to basically using reverse psychology and saying like, hey, if you're not in, you're out. You know, you're, you're not part of the cool crowd and everything like that. You know, that 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 definitely has a tendency to get people swayed, too. And and Gov, I, I would dare say there are a lot of parallels that you can maybe draw between uh, managing, you know, a a integrated marketing campaign like this and doing what, you know, you've been a master at for, you know, for decades in running for public office. So what are, what are some of the things that, you know, you can bring with your own experience and, you know, saying that, you know, okay, I know there's going to be a tremendous amount of people who are going to, um, you know, in your case, they're going to vote for me or they're going to get vaccinated just because they believe it's the right thing to do. But now that last 10% of the community who's standoffish and everything like that, you know, what advice can you give to your colleagues at GBB about, how to properly convince those people and, and get them to change their way of thinking. Well, I, I opened up my part that during the press conference last Friday, that this is the 77th year of our liberation from a lockdown uh, that, that, that happened uh, December 8, 1941. And that we did not, uh, you know, survive this thing by, by, by just going individually on their own, that the community stuck together and uh, that's how we got out of it. And as I was saying that, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's all for one and one for all kind of thinking that uh, you can't, uh, you know, think that you're outside of the community. So when you tell them that way, that, that we, this is the second lockdown that we've had. It's a year and a half. World War II was two and a half years. And we've been long at it and people are tired of being locked down, although maybe not as bad as in 1944 one to 1944 but it's the same parallel we have been locked down and now for us to get out of this lockdown let's all rise up together and let's celebrate july 21st 1941's uh, uh or 1944's liberation the 77th year uh and 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 compare it with with what we're going to go through now that's why i was so happy that the governor uh, made some monies available assigned gvb the uh, the the fireworks uh, part and the and the and the drones. Uh, this is going to be like uh, everybody wants to look forward to it. Look forward to to the first liberation day in 1944 that the people walked out of the caves and in the jungles and and into the community and looked at each other and said we did it we did it together because we are all in we are all in uh, this together. Mm -hmm. Very appropriately put. Um, Nadine, I'd like to ask you now, um, like much work lay ahead for for your side of the house over at GVB. So, you know, for the next six weeks leading into uh, the July 21st celebration of Liberation Day, uh, what are you looking at in terms of the pacing and, um, you know, more more marketing campaigns and then doing what GVB normally does is, you know, working with international partners and, you know, doing, um, uh, you know, trying to encourage uh, visitors from other parts of, of the region, if not the world. If, let, let's talk about the first, uh, or I should say the next six weeks. Uh, so every Wednesday, we're going to have a drawing uh, for those who have been vaccinated and entered the contest. We have uh, great support from like PHR, uh, Adage Trust, uh, Micronesia Mall, uh, Baba Corp, Nico Hotel, Subaki, uh, Hilton, GNC. There, all these companies have come out to support uh having people get vaccinated, right? Oh, God. And and uh, uh, in particular, we have some individuals that have uh, donated uh, cash prizes. 
So Tom Tahaji has given us cash prizes to give away. And uh, Sunny, yeah. I, I mentioned Adams yeah. Trust. Adams Trust has given us $5,000 as a prize. So and they do, it's, it's interesting because we also worked with you on the uh, the downloadathon. I want to say that was that was about what, maybe uh, 10 months ago? It was, yeah, that yeah. was about 10 months ago. And, 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 you know, we, you know, you guys didn't plan it, GVB, like, you know, the, the outpouring of support. And, you know, while we were doing like the live stream, all of a sudden people were messaging us left and right. And they were saying, I want to donate. I want to make a cash donation. If that people was, would like download the app, I want, you know, I've got jewelry. I want to donate. I've got, um, you know, clothes that I make and cash. everything like that. So it was, everybody was trying to do what we it could. And, and at least from my perspective and everything, that was like enough amount, like personified. Exactly. It was it was it was a beautiful sight to see. Um, as as we as the program was going on, we were like, oh, we need to add that to this and make sure we get a winner from that. It was it was just it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, and quite frankly, I, I have to say we're hoping for the same. We continue to do our reach out for prizes, and we're hoping that we can um, uh, put together some really good uh, packages, particularly for the kids, mm -hmm. right? So. Uh, uh, unfortunately, with our goals, they can't win more than a thousand dollars. So we want to make sure we maximize that thousand dollars as much as possible right. uh, with computers, uh, iPads, or, or whatever we could find. Now, whatever the ten thousand dollars in the car, obviously, you know, like the that's the thing that like really draws everybody in. But there are a number of other prizes. Um, can you kind of break those down too? Sure. Um, I was just talking about uh, some of the stuff that uh, people have, or the the companies who have given us. So like, for example, from PHR, we have three of their membership, their social membership cards, and one of their premium premium cards. We have uh, from Spa Asylum, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Premier Beauty at Spa Guam, we have a 60 minute massage. Uh, Graphic Center has even gotten involved. Uh, they're giving away some, some, some of their work. I think the gov wants to win that win that massage. You're pretty pretty happy when he oh, said man, that, right, gov? My arm is sore. Right? <laughs> you seem we, like you were cheering it on of, right there, gov. We got a bunch of lunches and whatnot, and then for the cars, um, from Auto Spot we have a Mitsubishi uh, hatchback. From Nissan uh, we have a Versa. From Triple J we have a Kia Soul. From Cars Plus we have a Hyundai Kona. Uh, from AK we have a Corolla, Toyota Corolla. And from Prestige Auto, we have a Subaru Crosstrek. Wow. Now, and it doesn't cost you anything to enter. And, no. and you have get vaccinated. Need, and you need to know that that uh, as fair as GVB is, we got one car from every dealer on this island, at around two two twenty thousand dollar range. And that is phenomenal, just to see how each each of the companies, but not surprising at all at the same time, how everybody would just say like, you know what, GVB, I'm in. Tell me what I have to do, and tell me where to, you know drop off the car now, now go, go from your perspective and everything like that as as the overall you know and the architect of the strategy on how we're going to handle um you know getting through the pandemic era obviously you're already looking you know past just the july 21st uh deadline and everything like that and you've mentioned a number of projects that you've got there's uh funding that you'll be receiving that you're going to use and everything um uh can you give us a status update on on how far we are with that project of uh turning Mathopang into Matapang Beach, I should say, into more of a, uh, is that like a public park or, you know, like building up the um, the facilities there? Well, first of all, they have been working on the uh, layout and the design. And uh, every day it changes. A lot of the people from the community uh, come in to add their perspective on what they want to see, less buildings, more open space. And so uh, I'm, our input here also is that uh, Let's just not design uh, something without all the proper infrastructures that go into place in any uh, any uh, growing community. For example, uh, you know, when you go out to uh, anywhere there that they're supposed, you can put a plaxon uh, a bell there. So whether something's going wrong there, you can have a, uh, you know, a, a, a siren or whatever it is for, for alert. Bathrooms are not just going to be two sets of bathrooms. One for the women, one for the for the men at three stalls each. But all along the walls there, you can put like, you know, a, a, a like a urinal bathroom where you can where men and women can go, and and have it all spaced out so there's no, uh, you know, uh, messing up of, of just one bathroom. But people can go easily. All those things are being put in place. 
how to how to e ingress and egress the the fire department the police uh, to get out there with their jet skis and uh, we're working closely with right now and the, for the time being working with Parks and Rec and, and uh, Rocky Alcantara to to see if GVB can pick up two uh, jet skis and also uh, uh, sub, uh, you know something to, to uh, 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 like a uh, forerunner for the for the lifeguards there and uh, so we're, we're working that out but the design is going on right now and I think the most important thing about this pro Matapan project is the, the storm drain that leads from PIC all the way to Fiesta and eventually from Fujita uh, area come, coming back we're going to fix it once and for all uh, because that funding base in there at, the, at Matapan is like collapsing so it sounds like like applying like a really really contemporary cosmopolitan modern approach while keeping with you know our traditional you know island values and you know making sure the Matapang beach is still that beautiful piece of sand and surf yeah. that everybody loves for you know generations and we have this uh, uh you know uh, we saw from hawaii and waikiki where they hang these uh this these uh these boats these proas these these canoes uh, uh, uh very efficiently instead of just laying them on the ground you're actually putting them up on hoist uh, a very and they nest into the into a small area and uh, it works good so the, we want to get the best and uh, and accommodate our paddle bowlers our our canoers and and really uh, just just get that place as the central Chamorro Matapan uh, park where where San Vitoris allegedly was killed mm -hmm. and we're going to heighten the cultural aspect of that park we're going to have, uh, you know, like a museum there, small museum, historical stuff that's uh, going to be uh, part of the whole process with uh, somebody manning it, you know, uh, all the time. Mm. And I'm sure, Gov, with your with your role as the permitting czar for the government of Guam and everything like that, you're well on top of making sure that, you know, all the paperwork is in place and all lined up and everything like that. So everything smows, flows smoothly and, you know, like in. And if we do have a launch date for when we can get this thing done and everything like that, everything is going to be by the book, right? Yes, I, I have a small hammer, but Lieutenant Governor Justin Oil has a bigger hammer. I lean on him because there's a <laughs> lot of a uh, lot of uh, the unnecessary delays right now that's going on. Mm. We're cutting through that process, and hopefully, uh, in in the next few weeks, that we would have one kind of uh, like the federal registry where they write out and tell all departments and agencies how to read a law, so that only one reading can come out of it. Right now, all the laws with permitting and licensing are incongruent. And uh, so I hopefully the, the governor, the lieutenant governor can tell his or her directors that this is the way you read this law, just one way and stop reading it your own personal way. Mm -hmm. Well, don't sell, sell your short, yourself uh, too short, Gov, because the, the Carl Gutierrez toolbox still carries a hell of a lot of weight, like in our community, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me go back to uh, Nadine and everything like that. So obviously your, t your team too, uh, and I go back to the fact that you guys uh, like have a lot of work. Uh, what's, the, uh, what's the tempo or the, or the motivation of keeping your, your group focused on what you have to do? And I mean, I know obviously by nature of the fact that you guys are the visitor's authority, you, know, you want to promote the holiday spirit, you know, warm, inviting, um, hospitable, accommodating, and everything like that. But after the last year and you know, having so many projects be delayed or canceled or completely pivoted and shifted and everything like that. Um, from your vantage point, how do you make sure that everybody just stays focused on what we have to do and that we can achieve the mission? You know, we, we have a great bunch of indiv individuals here at the uh, Bureau. And um, I got to say, we, we all want to bring tourism back. Uh, we all just want to make sure that we do it safely and that uh, um, working with uh, I basically want to call a zero budget. We we went from about 18 million to uh, well, GBB's total budget was 22, and then we went to six million, which basically left the marketing department with a little over a million dollars uh, just to maintain fees. So working on a zero budget is always challenging. Uh, essentially, trying to maintain our presence in the different countries. Uh, and create that desire to want to come to Guam when the time is right. Uh, it is, it's been extremely challenging without the, the funds back to back it up. But with that said, we because of the nature of the people of Guam, 
uh, our messages have been simple and pure where, you know, uh, give us a moment and uh, get up and move. We we're, we're trying to move forward with everything. We got the Airbnb program coming on. Great support, uh, great outpouring of desire to come to Guam to get vaccinated. Uh, we, I have a waiting list of about 100 people just waiting for the hotels to put their packages together. Uh, there's also other programs that we have coming up. Um, looking to the future, right? So one of the things that GBB or Guam, I should say, is good at handling groups or incentive tours. Um, we've been receiving inquiries for 2024 and 2025. So we're moving forward. Uh, it's not going to happen right away. It's going to happen slowly. But our tourism will come back. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the and, reasons uh, why GVB... Asian, but, oops, I'm sorry. Let, 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 me, let me add that, uh, I, that uh, Nadine and, and our marketing group, are, you know, there's different uh, managers for the different uh, source country like Taiwan the Philippines, uh, South Korea, and, and Japan. But uh, uh, Japan, Korea seems to be the uh, the ones we're looking at right now to start flying in vaccinated uh, um, uh, tourists because they want to they want to come here and uh, as and we're trying to set the protocol of how to accept uh, and validate those vaccine vaccinations. But they're ready to come, and Jeju Air and uh, and others are already planning. Uh, to start sending uh, their planes in uh, loaded with uh, vaccinated tourists from Korea. Mm. Well, I got to tell you, as, as we let you guys go, I mean, we've been working with the both of you for, you know, for way longer than just the last 15 months. But I mean, mm. it is a very positive and encouraging thing to see from us in the media that like the two of you are now saying, you know, we've got some optimism and that now we've got our strategy in place and we're going to start executing this rather than you know, like you know like the last year it's like you know we tried to put a plan together and i could just see with the both of you it was frustrating because we had to keep again you know stalling things changing things because we didn't know what was going to happen one day to the next and everything so i think obviously gvb is uh, as successful as it is because they've got a really strong leadership team and and the two of you are I'm certainly not, a major part of that and now it's made it made easier by the governor signing on she's the one that's really now on top of it she has given a renewed focus on uh getting the economy going right now. All right, Absolutely. well, former Governor Carl Gutierrez and Nadine leon Guerrero at the Guam Visitors Bureau. Thank you much for your time. Uh, congratulations again. Or, Nadine, do you have a specific number for where we are right now with the, uh, uh, with the vaccine? Uh, I, you know, I just know the, the 19,100, but hopefully, like I said, we're probably gonna hit 20 by nine o'clock. I, I don't have that number yet. Okay, <laughs> well, let, let's just call it an even 20, but in two minutes from now, so it's gonna be you know, like, I think that's a fair assessment to make, but. Everybody is participating in this, so thank you very much, and have a wonderful day, both of you. Thank you, Jason. Thanks for promoting uh, Airbnb. All right. So just Masi, go. Bye-bye. All right, and we are going to take a break, but when we come back, everybody, members from the 33rd Guam Youth Congress, we're going to hear from young leaders of our community when we come back right here on The Link. After a year with so many games and events delayed or unplayed, the world is ready for anything and everything in the world of sports. KUAM Communications is ready with more games, more championships, and more specials that are guaranteed to bring out the fan in you. Don't miss a minute of gameplay from NBC on KUAM TV 8 or from CBS on KUAM TV 11. Every month, we'll bring you the action and excitement. Brought to you locally by Michelob Ultra Superior Light Beard. Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape, and Docomo Pacific. Just more great reasons to tune in and turn on so you'll fall in love with TV again with the best from KUAM Communications. I decided to get vaccinated because just thinking about all the lives lost from COVID and everyone on island that contracted the illness, I realized that I need to do my part, not just to protect myself, but our community. And I also realized we're still not out of the woods with variants that are out there. I want to be safe and I want to keep my family safe. I'm Tyler Matsunani and I'm a proud member of the vaccination. Join the vaccination, scan and plan. For more information, go to KUAM.com. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. 
Family platter of fried chicken. Check. Tray of red rice. Check. Birthday cake. Check. One case of water. Check. 12 pack of beer. Check. Two cases of Pepsi. Check. When you have a long checklist but are short on time, we got you. Get it delivered by us. Order on the app or website at uno-go.com. Guam on demand. Shoot, I forgot the paper product. Oh wait, UnoGo has that too. Help us celebrate the class of 2021. KUAM wants to help you celebrate this touchstone moment in the lives of your graduates. For the months of May and June, we will flood the social media pages of KUAM with photos and well wishes for the class of 2021 grads. Log on to KUAM.com to submit photos and brief messages or captions. Then look for your special grad on KUAM Instagram and the Facebook pages. From all of your friends here at KUAM, congratulations, seniors! The relationship between Guam and Manila, Philippines is undeniable as we share similar cultural traditions, history, and heritage with generations of Filipinos calling Guam home. KUAM presents a monthly look at the capital city featuring in-depth and engaging interviews on everything from medical tourism to new business and government leaders. Veteran newscaster Nestor Lecanto delivers Beyond Our Borders. This special program is brought to you by the Bank of Guam and KFC. Uh, we had a comment here. Eric Cruz commented, wow, does Carl not age? Uh, yeah, he ages. He reverse ages. <laughs> he gets younger the more involved in Gov Guam he is. <laughs> you know, that, that does that does just prove, though, like if you, if you stay active and yeah. stay, stay aware and everything like that. Yep. Yeah, uh, and you'll stick around. Yeah, he's, he's very, very spry. Yeah. Uh, 903. Good morning. Welcome to the link. Uh, Monday, June 7th. Let's go ahead and go into the KUAM News uh, Zoom room. Where we have uh, standing by uh, members of the Guam Youth Congress who just put out a release. Uh, we have Vice Speaker Al LeBang. Uh, I'll go ahead and introduce your colleague. Well, today, first of all, I'm Vice Speaker Al LeBang. And together with me, we have Majority Leader Vicente Blossaren from the village of Munich's Monet Farman. And we have Representative Anika Virahana Macho from the village of Sinahanya. Top of the day, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, is it Anika? Yes. Yeah, okay, we can hear you. All right, so we're on here uh, basically because uh, we're talking about how to spend the American Rescue Plan funding. And there's a big. Uh, public hearing on the resolution that the Guam legislature had uh, put forth. And basically, they had sent the governor a priority list of spending for the American Rescue Plan Act funds um, and then put that list into a resolution form and had a public hearing and uh, also solicited uh, input uh, for people to give their two cents on how we should spend the $600 million. Okay, who's got a dog? That's mine, sorry. No worries. <laughs> Little dog, big dog. Big one. <laughs> pure, pure, pure bread or boonie? Rottweiler. Rottweiler. Oh, wow. All right.
right. So, uh, yeah, your release that went out, Vice Speaker, just touch on that a little bit, and uh, then we'll just jump right into it. So, yeah, um, Majority Leader Vicente Blasera and I came together to came up with a press release on regards to the American Rescue Plan. And it's very important that you voice should have been included and added to to planning the rest on how to spend the rest of time because it's important that every everyone everyone that is part of this community should be aware on where that money should be spent and how should it be spent and it's also our duty as voters and everyday people to know where and even taxpayers to know where the money would go and everyone should be involved in the process Monica? Yeah, as representatives, we do have the responsibility to secure the needs of our youth, who are our constituents. You know, our constituents consist of ages 14 to 22. And with this, from a political perspective, we do not receive a lot of attention because we aren't a strong voting bloc. In fact, most of our constituents and members of Youth Congress cannot even vote. So it becomes our body's responsibility to ensure that some of the federal funding will go to programs that will help benefit the youth. Uh, Vicente? Yes, Stephanie, I just wanna extend um, the sentiment shared by my colleagues previously to say that the youth are the future of our island and we, we are the leaders of the present, but we are also the leaders of tomorrow. And so ensuring that we have programs in place and a set infrastructure that allows the youth to grow uh, on Guam is is a, is essential and important for the well-being of our island. And I think we all can share in the same sentiment that the COVID-19 pandemic has brought a lot of issues forward and a lot of um, a lot of new challenges forward. And so this this fund seems like a great opportunity to combat those challenges and to improve the lives of not only the youth, but all all people who call Guam home. Uh, you know, in looking at the list that the senators had given over to the governor, there was there was uh, quite a few, I want to say over 10 million that was, uh, they were trying to um, give to GCC and the University of Guam, and this is relative to scholarships um, for professional uh, technical medical uh, fields. Um, and I, I want to say they also had uh, wanted to put money in uh, some of the work programs at, at GCC. I don't recall offhand if they had any money for DYA, but when you talk about, you know, allocating, earmarking any of these these ARP funds to spend on the youth, it's a very general statement, right? So let's get into the specifics, uh, shall we? Definitely. Um so I, I, I can agree with all of my colleagues here that we, we do have um, some recommendations as far as allocations for the RP fund. Um, and you know, thank you again for the opportunity to speak about them. Um, like all days, the sun rises and we have been afforded this opportunity to reinvest, rebuild and, and recuperate our local economy and infrastructure. And this will help better the lives of those of Color Island home and continue improving the quality of lives for all people. And so things like upgrading the Guam Memorial Hospital with new advanced equipment that will allow medical personnel to better meet healthcare needs and that will expand the portfolio and potentially lessen costs for patients. Um, and investing in our local economy, empowering small businesses through uh, support in the, of the allocation of $30 million to the Guam Economic Development Authority in order to ensure their stable recovery and, and continued success. Um, enabling the Guam Visitors Bureau to make necessary repairs and assist in rebuilding the tourism industry, a, an essential sector of our island through an allocation of the $38 million, as well as um, even improving public transportation, uh, just to echo the sentiments of former speaker of the Guam Youth Congress, Raven Santos, a lot of youth have to pass up opportunities just, for the, just because of the fact that they do not have access to proper and efficient transportation. And so it's essential that we allow the citizens of our island, especially the youth, to travel through the island in a safe and efficient manner. Wow, all of that. Um, yeah, I mean, also add on, um, 
I think we should also focus on diversifying our economy because um, I know we have tourism industry and it's great, but at the same time, with pandemic, it's hard to, it's hard that our economy, especially looking at businesses in Q1, some of them are shut down for a long time now. And I think we should also focus on the agriculture and agriculture industry here in Guam. And also like, I believe in the last Guam that nature center D is like pushing for telecommunications here on Guam and making Guam as a tech hub here in Oceania and Asia. And also, I think we should also focus on building a new hospital, which is a big issue since I think I was in middle school and I'm already on my fourth year of college. And I think we should also invest on unemployment insurance program and, and something that this pandemic really taught us. Like we have a lot of people who are unemployed and they cannot rely on anything and with unemployment insurance program, they have some benefits that they can receive while they're unemployed and at the same time finding a job that is su suitable for them. What do you guys make of uh, the governor's plan to use, I think, some 300 million? The senators had wanted to put 200 million, uh, but the governor wants to use 300 million to build a new hospital? I think they can find a compromise on that and probably either either 300 or 200, which one is better? I think that's uh, for them to plan on how much they should spend on the hospital, but they also need to put aside other things for other areas of our community, such as education and public safety. Yes, to also add on what my colleague said, the pandemic has also shown the importance of our island's well-being and overall health. And before I propose any solutions and how to allocate this rescue plan, I want to identify the major problems our youth faces, which is mental health and suicide, obesity, drugs, and alcohol abuse. And in regards to the importance of sports complex, the importance of physical education, we can set aside funds to fix the Haganya and Dedodo pool. Now, the Haganya and Dedodo, the Haganya pool was closed on January 17, 2020, and it is still closed. And one of the reasons why the pool closed was because of the toxic chlorine levels and the presence of chloroform bacteria. Additionally, it was noted in a January 2020 Pacific Daily News article that the pool's sand filtration, filtration system needed to be decrystallized. And it, it is apparent that the funds for the pool were declining over the years. However, it is essential to fix swimming pools. The cost to fix the systems and tanks of the pools are about $200,000. Additionally, the maintenance for both public pools is said to cost about $330 per year. And with the 600 million rescue plan that Guam now has, it is important to set aside a portion of those funds to repair and maintain the Haganya and Dedodo pool. And as Islanders, we are always surrounded by the ocean and there is no justification as to why not all our children in the island do not know how to swim properly or at all. And I attended the Academy of Our Lady of Guam. I still attend the Academy of Our Lady of Guam and it was required for our sophomore year to take a semester of swimming. My class was fortunate enough to be the last class to utilize the swimming pool for our swimming lessons. And whilst taking swimming lessons, I also saw other people training for competitions like the Olympic Guam hopefuls. It is disheartening as these Olympic hopeful hopefuls weren't able to train because the pool closed and the pandemic has also hit. We are not just focusing on Olympic swimming hopefuls, but also other athletes who use the swimming pools to cross train with their sport. And with the 600 million, it is important to support sports and the Guamanian athletes who need to be given more recognition for their hard work in representing our island in the sports that they do. We have so much incredible athletes here. It is essential that we promote the importance of sports to Guam's youth and to all Guamanians in general. Additionally, it is important to maintain the sport complex and basketball courts that we have on our island. You know, I live in Sinahanya and our village has a basketball court that is always being utilized by our youth. So it's important to keep the basketball courts and sport complex alive as it also helps improve the well-being of those who utilize it. Because of the pandemic, the parks also. 
are always being utilized for those who want to exercise or just to spend time with their family and friends. And with this, the 600 million, again, should also be used to help fund Guam's parks, recreation programs to help maintain the parks and create a safe environment for Gu Guamanians. And with the investment in sport complex and promoting the importance of well-being, this can also subsequently help in addressing Guam's obesity problem. According to a 2018 Stable Guam Diabetes article, there is a dire diabetes epidemic on Guam. And to add to that devastation, there are minimal data to inform solutions. Nearly 12% of all adults in Guam have diabetes. Diabetes is the fourth leading cause of death on Guam, with obesity affecting almost 22% of tomorrows and being a major risk for diabetes. Furthermore, Guam has a higher rate of childhood obesity than the mainland US at 23%. And those are staggering and frightening numbers. With this, obesity is a major problem that occurs on our island, especially among Guam's youth. In addition to promoting and funding sports complex, we also need to promote the importance of health and well-being, help fund programs such as the Stay Well Guam Diabetes Foundation and raise, raise awareness to the risk of diabetes. Additionally, we need to also help fund the research of diabetes on Guam and the $600 million plan can greatly accomplish this. Now, in regards to the drug and alcohol abuse that occurs on our island, especially among our youths. According to a 2021 KUAM article, some 46% of high school youth obtain marijuana one or more times in their lifetime. And according to GBHWC, Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center, 20% of middle school students on island have used marijuana at least once in their lifetime. Drug abuse is a great detriment toward the health of our island, especially toward the health of our youth. You know, young people's brains are growing and developing until they are in their mid 20s and taking drugs when young can interfere with the de developmental processes occurring in their brain. Taking drugs when young can also interfere with developmental processes that occur in the brain and people who utilize drugs when they're young, they're likely to be addicted to that drug as they age, which can put them, them at risk for having heart disease, lung problems having high blood pressure, and also experiencing sleep disorders. Even alcohol, again, is a great detriment towards the well-being of our island, especially our youth. So to help mend this issue we have on Guam, it's important to support programs that spread the importance of living a drug and alcohol-free lifestyle and showing the detrimental effects drug and alcohol can cause one to experience. So with the, the rescue, $600 million rescue plan, supporting such programs, such as the Youth for Youth, who specialize in educating teens on the detrimental effects of drugs and alcohol, and also promoting an alcohol and drug-free lifestyle is important. Additionally, we also need to support Guam's behavioral and wellness center programs as their efforts and research are essential to the well-being of our youth. Now, lastly, suicide. You know, according to a 2018 Post Guam article, Guam's child death review team released data examining the 298 deaths of children and young people in Guam between 2013 and 2016. Suicide was listed as the leading cause of death for youth, 24, and the second leading cause of death for children ages 10 to 14. The pandemic has not been much of a help either, as the suicide rates have proliferated since the beginning of the pandemic. This is why it is important to continue to fund suicide prevention plans suicide hotlines and organization communities that deal with these kinds of issues. Guam Behavioral Wellness Center has a myriad of suicide prevention programs and to also circle back into the importance of sports and physical activity. Physical activity can help improve the well-being and mental health of our youth and Guamanians in general, which is why it is important that we allocate a portion of the rescue plan towards, you know, physical education, the importance of sports centers, and all that. Wow. Yeah. Well, well done. Good job. Awesome uh, talk there, Annika. Uh, yeah. So we should just send that over to the um, governor's office. Do you guys? So, um, do you think the governor watched these public hearings that we had? Uh, Friday, do you think she kind of pays attention to this conversation that the whole island is having about uh, where to put this money? 
I believe that, yeah, I think they should listen to at least like everyone who's speaking in those public hearings because it's very important to include people into decision making on how this fund should be spent. And I know $600 million is a big responsibility put on us by the federal government. Right on. Uh, good job, guys. So you come out with this uh, release. Walk us through the process, right? So I know that you guys operate in your own uh, bubble, but when you come out with a release like that, do you get these calls or you know any contact from uh, elected leaders uh, saying, "Hey, good idea," or "Hey, we want to you know fold you into this uh, conversation"? Yeah, most most yeah. of the time we do. And the Guam legislature, especially um, a lot of the, um, often they won't be help, especially our oversight chair of Senator Amanda Shelton. And so, you know, as Guam Youth Congress representatives, we find it important to build these relationships with each government and really work and collaborate with them in order to make a an impact, a profound impact on our island. Right on. Uh, I love having you guys on, uh, Vice Speaker. Let's uh, continue this uh, trend. And what what other things are kind of on you guys? Is uh, I mean, this is a big one though, right? <laughs> Coming up with yeah. a, with a spending plan. But what are what else are you guys? What other issues are you guys looking at? So last Saturday we just had a session on ending cash bail, and yeah, we had a bill that want to abolish cash bail. And yeah, I know there's. I know it's a, there's two sides on here. Like some of us do agree with it, some of us don't agree with it. But at the end of the day, we work it around. How do you guys? Yeah, also, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Annika. You know, because of the pandemic, education for Guam's youth is important, and it is a priority of mine. You know, education is essential. It provides stability in one's life. It's what exposes the youth to the opportunities and careers that exist out there and on Guam. Science, STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education is essential. And we need to support the yearly science fair that occurs in our island and give our youth more exposure to careers in STEMs through internships. You know, I myself have experienced the wide ranging benefits a STEM internship hat gives you and what our island wide science fair can offer. Yeah, you know, I have done the NOAA and NSF include sign internships that expose me towards the different fields of science our island can offer and allow me to gain firsthand experience in doing so. You know, also science fairs are dear to me because I have done science fairs since I was in fifth grade and, and actually the overall winner for the recent island wide science fair we had. Furthermore, Ms. Claudia Titano is Guam's greatest advocate towards promoting science and without her and individuals like her, the science programs would greatly suffer here on Guam and probably wouldn't exist in the caliber that it does today. The pandemic has shown the great importance of science and the great importance of supporting science, especially in our youth. It is our scientists and doctors, medical professionals who have allowed us to stay alive and healthy during this pandemic and without our great scientists and medical professionals on Guam, we would not be in the amazing position we are in presently. It does not hurt that our governor is a nurse herself and understands the importance of science and exposing our youth to that. And I was also glad to see the Lieutenant Governor in the Island Wide Science Fair Award Ceremony last week, showing he does show a great concern towards the youth and towards STEM. So we should continue to invest in science on Guam and hopefully utilize some of that $600 million towards science as it ha has helped us towards this pandemic and will continue to help us in the future. No further questions, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, Al, thank you for coming on. Uh, wow, that flew by a half hour. Uh, thank you for having us. Of course, let's, yeah. let's continue this. So we'll get you guys on next week. Thank you. <laughs> right on. Plenty of comments here. My WhatsApp's blowing up. People are messaging me. Wow, these guys sound better than most of our leaders. <laughs> uh, good job to our Youth Congress, DM Thai uh, comments. And Shamarita Regis, 
I'm so speechless. Way to go, Annika Camacho. That's the voice that Guam needs in Congress. Thank you, guys. Thank you. This awesome. session of the Youth uh, Congress is adjourned. <laughs> where's, where's your gavel? I need a gavel. I need to borrow uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Governor's hammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Right on. Good talk there, guys. How was that, Jay? That was phenomenal. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, I've, I mean, you know, it's one thing to read uh, like a prepared statement, but you could tell they put a lot of thought into it. I think it was also very pragmatic. Um, you know, and the legislature is going to say because I mean, the, I mean, okay, everybody needs to know that the Guam legislature puts a lot of faith into the Youth Congress. I mm. mean, their ideas are highly considered. You know, a lot of them came from the Youth Congress. Yeah. We were talking about this earlier in the show. Um, well, you know, what's interesting too is just that uh, some of the differences in uh, opinion that they have, whereas we had our legislature. Remember the silencer uh, bill? Yeah. Right. So our legislature was like the grown up one was all in for it. And the youth Congress, they uh, we had them on and they had done a resolution like totally opposing it. Mm -hmm. So it's always interesting for me to see where not not necessarily where they agree on things, but where they don't agree on mm -hmm. um, issues. Because, you know, the youth uh, Congress guys keep an eye on them because, uh, you know, the way politics is moving, I feel like. Both sides, Republican and Democrat, are really racing uh to the extremes, like ideologically, ideologically. So it's very interesting to keep track on like what some of these uh, youth are saying, thinking, the ideas that they're putting forth, because it really is an indicator of what we can expect um, the political rhetoric to be like, you know, down the road in the future. Mm -hmm. Really good. And uh, like I said, I mean, a lot of a lot of those ideas. I mean, anybody can just say, okay, well, we need more funding for the schools, more right. funding for health care, more mm -hmm. funding for public safety and everything like that they actually had a very doable plan yeah and it's like you know they already understand you know like the give and take you, you know and who, who was telling us the other day when they said oh mi uh, mr burn when he came out and he said you know the way budgeting works you spend 20 bucks somewhere 20 somewhere else you're gonna have to take out 20 bucks so <laughs> yeah you know, and, and that's, that's how it works oh. oh that's how it works got it you know what, you want, you want to stay on the youth tip for a second because we've got that Just for Kids segment that we have. We do, Jay. We do actually yeah. have that. Let's go do that. Uh, this is a great segment um, that we... I'm going to leave the page. Uh, that we do it kind of... Do I have that? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, very similar to something we did back during the height of the pandemic where it was like we had kids ask doctors different questions about COVID-19. And uh, so here we have uh, our Just for Kids segment featuring from the Physicians Advisory Group Dr. Michael Um, right here on the link. Good morning. Hi, I'm Dr. Mike. I'm a board certified pediatrician at One Love Pediatrics. My name is Aiden Rosario. I'm 13 years old and I have a few questions concerning the vaccination. My first question is, how effective will a vaccination be from contracting COVID? Great question. The Pfizer vaccine, which is what's available for kids right now, is about 95% effective in preventing COVID. However, real-world data is showing that if you get vaccinated, the chance of you getting COVID goes down to about 1 in 10,000. Even better news, if you get vaccinated, the chance of you getting COVID and then getting sick enough to end up in a hospital, that goes down really, really low. Not quite zero, but pretty close. My next question is, once I do get vaccinated, is it still going to be mandatory for me to wear a mask or am I able not to wear a mask out in public? The CDC has put out some recommendations that it might be safe to not wear a mask if you've been vaccinated. That, however, does depend on where you live. In Guam, we still think it's a good idea for you to wear a mask even if you are vaccinated, just in case. We're not, still not quite at herd immunity for vaccinations, but when we get there, that might change. My next question is about getting the vaccine because me personally, I do not like getting shots. So once I, while I'm getting the vaccination, is the shot gonna hurt? And afterwards, will I feel sick? The COVID shot, like any shot, that poke might sting for a minute. Afterwards, later that day, you might feel a little soreness in your arm. And the next day or two, you might feel some headaches, maybe some fatigue, maybe even a low grade fever. But it really shouldn't last for more than a day or two and it really shouldn't be too bad. Some people barely felt anything at all. My last and final question is, why is it so important to get the vaccine for people my age? What's so important about it? 
It's important to get the COVID shot because we want to protect the kids from getting COVID. This virus is very unpredictable and we still don't know exactly who's going to get COVID and then who's going to get really sick and need to go to the hospital after getting COVID. Also, we still don't know the long-term effects of COVID. It's still way too early to tell. So we don't know what's going to happen five, 10 years from now. So we want to protect you in case anything bad happens down the line. And finally, even though we know that kids are not as good as adults at catching COVID and at passing on COVID, we do know that it can still happen. So this isn't just about protecting yourself, it's about protecting the people around you. It's about protecting your parents, your grandparents, your baby brother or your baby sister. All right, welcome back, 9.30. Let's go ahead and take care of uh, Cover Me right now, which is brought to you by our friends at Burger King, where it's drive through Oh, hold on, let me check. The book of Burger King. A reading from the book of BK. You know, I went to BK last yeah. week, and I did the I love, love, love the Whopper thing. Right on. Man, that's the gift that keeps on giving, man, I'm telling you. It is, uh, and it, it's always uh, going on here. Whopper Wednesday is back, celebrating the class of 2021. 20, I love, love, love. The Whopper. I love the Whopper. Uh, here you go. Cover me. Also brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Good morning. Long night, I'm by far and I'm going to do what I want. 
Progression was was had Jason tearing up. Yeah, I, th- I think my my there's go- something in your glasses that's fogging it up. Yeah, right, Jason? my new glasses. Yeah, it's, it's the mask. It's allergies. No, that was that was one of those chord progressions. It's like wow, okay, like stop what you're doing. You okay, bro. This. You okay. Yeah, man. That <laughs> hey, we're gonna take a break and let Jason regroup. <laughs> Right here on the link, which is brought to you by our friends at Pacific Points. I got the feels, man. IT&E. Jack in the box. Yep, you get your uh, triple cheddar uh, bacon biscuit. You, they do it with sausage, too. So if you want bacon or sausage, uh, pick your meat. Meaty Monday. All right. Uh, and also Cabo Enterprises. 936. We're back with more of the link. Next, good morning. Family platter of fried chicken. Check. Tray of red rice. Check. Birthday cake. Check. One case of water. Check. 12 pack of beer. Check. Two cases of Pepsi. Check. When you have a long checklist but are short on time, we got you. Get it delivered by us. Order on the app or website at uno-go.com. Guam on demand. Shoot, I forgot the paper product. Oh wait, Uno Go has that too. June makes the best malasadas in Hawaii. A fact not lost on Daryl, whose brother Byron is cooking the onaga he caught at a secret fishing spot with his girlfriend Malia, who used to work for the Shave Ice Guy, whose second cousin Vince drives the school bus ridden by Kalei, whose auntie makes the best malasadas in Hawaii. Everything here is connected, and with the new First Hawaiian Bank mobile app, you can stay just as connected to your finances. And it all starts with yes. KUAM's multi-platform morning show, The Link, just got a little more delicious with Feed Me Fridays. Chris, Sabrina, Jason, and the rest of the morning crew will take some time each Friday to talk food, taste food, and bring you all the latest and greatest in food from King's Restaurants and Ruby Tuesday Guam. Old faves, new hits, and everything on the menu in between. It's Feed Me Fridays on The Link. As a reporter, I often ask people what compelled them to get the COVID-19 vaccine. For me, someone who's lived through coronavirus, I can't help but fear the idea of possibly infecting others, unknowingly passing it along to someone with a lesser immune system, someone's mother, father, grandparent, or someone who wouldn't be as blessed to suffer only minor symptoms. When I contracted COVID, that is what weighed most on my heart and mind. And that's why I did everything in my power to prevent this from happening, by following public health protocols. And now I am doing the same thing, being mindful my decisions, choices, and actions don't only affect me, but the entire nation. So I chose to get vaccinated, simply to protect others. My name is Adriana Catero. I'm a KUAM news reporter and anchor, and a proud member of the vaccination. Join the vaccination. Scan and plan. For more information, go to KUAM.com. After a year with so many games and events delayed or unplayed, the world is ready for anything and everything in the world of sports. KUAM Communications is ready with more games, more championships, and more specials that are guaranteed to bring out the fan in you. Don't miss a minute of gameplay from NBC on KUAM TV 8 or from CBS on KUAM TV 11. Every month, we'll bring you the action and excitement. Brought to you locally by Michelob Ultra, Superior Light Beer, Marianas Irrigation and Landscape, and Docomo Pacific. Just more more great reasons to tune in and turn on so you'll fall in love with TV again with the best from KUAM Communications. Catch SportsLink on the KUAM News Morning Show, The Link, every Friday to hear about the latest in sports news, game schedules, athlete profiles, and more. SportsLink, brought to you each week by Cure Alkaline Water, airs every Friday across the multimedia platforms of KUAM. Tune into the broadcast on Breeze 93.9 FM on KUAM TV 11, live streaming through the KUAM News Facebook page, or view highlights on YouTube, KUAM News Facebook, and Instagram. SportsLink is hosted by Dave Delgado through KUAM Sports, and he will make sure that everyone knows what is happening on the field in the gyms, and everywhere in between.
far as we know, uh, the suspect in that the fatal stabbing is still at large uh, this morning. If you see something, uh, say something. Good morning, Jay. Good morning. Another song that's... Uh, Are you feeling this one? Got a rather it's called Winter Season Lover. Rather evocative chord progression. Yeah, it's Harmony. Chia! I think that's how you say the last name. <laughs> so I would say it. Uh, 941, Monday, June 7th. You know, uh, having done radio for, what did you say this morning? 30 years? Or you added some years there. Yeah, I think you've got like at least 25. Right? But there's a, there's a whole thing in radio where, you, there, you know, you can get this show prep where you can read like stupid crime news. Right, and so a lot of DJs would they would subscribe to this service, and they would send you these stupid crime stories. Ninety percent of which were just Florida. Yeah, from the states. But I've always said that you don't need stupid crime stories from the states to do radio in Guam because we got plenty of stupid crime right here. Um, and there are a, a few on the um, website. Here's this one. That looks like that Pua might have finally run out on this guy. Man allegedly damaged car as it was being repossessed. Uh, 34-year-old Joseph David Calvo Atalig was arrested and charged with criminal mis mischief as a third-degree felony and harassment as a petty misdemeanor. Now, according uh, to a magistrate's complaint on June 3rd, Atalig became aggressive to the victim as a car was being repossessed in Talafolfu. Atalig allegedly told the victim to leave and said, I will hit you. He then allegedly began damaging the car even as it was being secured to a tow truck. You want to give it a score? Or <laughs> on the How's that one? That was, that was starting strong. That just reminds me of all the people who went out and bought new cars during Pua. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right, sir? <laughs> the car dealerships were just like salivating every time they a Pua uh, came out. But you know what, guys? If you can't afford to get a car, don't, because they're giving away cars. That's how cars are. They're giving away what six cars? Six of them. Six cars. And even if you're brand loyal, there's a there's a one in six chance you're gonna get your favorite dealership. Yeah, we had Carl, uh, former Governor Carl Gutierrez, GVB president, on earlier, and what did he say? He said, "How are we at GVB? They got one car from each of the dealers." Yep. So everybody got to wet their beak on this. Um, yeah, so guys, they're giving away six cars. Uh, just register. What is it again, Jake? Yeah, so uh, visit guam.com slash V-A-X. Uh, I, like I like that nice choice of words when you said they get to wet their beak. Yeah. Some Godfather 2. Uh, yeah, I watched Godfather it, uh, did you? last month or some, uh, no, something. Don Fanucci. <laughs> hey, let me, let me try to I, wet the beak a little yeah. bit. <laughs> uh, what else we got here? Yeah, there was a couple stories, uh, Jay, about, well, this one here is uh, Vance Bamba accused of continuously striking woman in the face as she held a newborn. Uh, according to magistrate's complaint on June 1st, the victim reported to police that as she tried to leave a home, Vance Bamba allegedly continuously struck her with both hands in the face while she held a two-month-old baby. During the assault, Bamba also allegedly struck the newborn uh, for a moment, Bamba stopped, allowing the victim to sit on a bed, but then allegedly began striking her again in the face, according to court docs. The victim was eventually able to leave when Bamba fell asleep. Uh, you see a lot of these stories where these people, these dudes are on meth, and they do something crazy, and they're just like downing so hard that they literally just fall asleep. Right, they had that in this. Uh, There's this federal case with Leo Palace where they raided Leo Palace for the couple of these guys were like accused of bringing in ice and they're trying to sell it. And, and they, when they broke into the room, like the guys were sleeping. You know what I mean? But terrible. Then there was another story here, Jay, that we had. Uh, I know you talked about this story uh, earlier about uh, 
I don't know if I can find it here. This is the one about uh, the guy who allegedly punched a 12-year-old in the face. And a pregnant woman, I believe. And a pregnant woman. Mother, yeah. Right. Where is that at? Um, yeah, we're checking out KUM.com, guys, if you want to uh, jump on our KUM.com. Uh, yeah, it's somewhere there. There's also another one. Man said he drank a six-pack of beer before getting behind the wheel. 23-year-old Bernard Helson was arrested and charged twice with DWI as misdemeanors with one charge, uh, including uh, blood alcohol content. According to court docs, around 9.14 in the morning on June 3rd. What day was that, Jay? The 3rd was... It was like Thursday, Thursday. right? Th- Thursday, 9 o'clock in the morning. What the hell are you doing that wasted at 9 o'clock in the morning? Then you got a job, boy? Then I get a job, boy. That's the Pua and I. You guys are going crazy on the Pua. Uh, police pulled over Helson, Bernard Helson, over in Jigo after he allegedly abrup- abruptly stopped in the middle of the roadway. Officers noted his windows were down and Helson wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Uh, his car was noted as smelling of alcohol while he observed having bloodshot, watery eyes and slurred speech. Helson also allegedly told police he drank a six-pack of beer. Uh, he then refused the standardized field sobriety test, but later at the Dedito Precinct took a breath test, which resulted in a blood alcohol content of 0.108. That's up there. That might be a record. Well, you know, at least he didn't crash into any restaurants. Uh, what else we got here? Yeah, there's some crazy guys. If you just go on the, like I said, you don't need stupid. We have so many stupid criminals here on island. Oh, look at this guy. This is crazy. This is what's wrong with our, our criminal justice system. Tamooning Marble suspect arrested again after allegedly terrorizing victim with slingshot. Less than a month ago, Rodman Machuo was arrested after he allegedly shot marbles at a Timoning restaurant in Van. You remember this? Yep. Yeah, this is a big to... thing in Timoning. There was video of Officer Susie Santos with the double. How did she take that guy down? Was it like double leg or single? Was it inside? She took the guy down. Right? Because, you know, anytime you're dealing with someone who's got a, w- a distance weapon, like mm-hmm. a slingshot, you want to close the distance and you yeah. take away the advantage. Um, Again, another movie reference. You're quoting, <laughs> you're quoting Hunt for Red October. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Man. It's like, how, how did the torpedo I not have fire? a certain skill set. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, this was just a month ago. This knucklehead was out there slingshotting. This is so dangerous. These guys, they slingshot. Uh, whenever they bust somebody with a slingshot, the slingshot bandits. This is actually a thing. Like, they'll get slingshots. And, I mean, how many times have we seen in the news where it's like they arrest somebody who's slingshotting little pieces of rebar, like rebar nuggets. Dude, can you imagine you or worse, your kid getting hit with freaking marbles? Or what is wrong with, what's wrong with you guys? Because somebody was asking me and they're they're like, so what, you know, what kind of damage can that do? I mean, can you imagine just walking to your car and then boom, you get freaking slingshotted in the head? I mean, it's not just about it breaking skin. You can break a bone. You can take out an eye. Yeah, you can put your eye out with that thing. According to court documents, on the evening of June 2nd, which was last Wednesday, police officers spotted two vehicles near the entrance of the old Harmon Cliff Line village when they activated their blue lights. A man, later identified as Machuo, quickly began to walk away. Officers then spoke with the man in the other car who alleged Machuo tried to run him off the road, causing him to nearly hit a concrete, med- a concrete median. When the victim honked at Machuo, Machuo allegedly brandished a slingshot and pointed it at the victim's vehicle. When they both stopped, Machua allegedly got out of his car and aimed the slingshot at the victim's face. How is this guy out on the street? How? How is this guy back out on the street doing the same crap? I just don't get it. It's like they don't care about our safety out here. You know, I was reading in, um, on Facebook, and we haven't yet really publicly identified the victim of yesterday's stabbing uh, murder, but I was reading on the sister's uh, Facebook that 
there were several instances where the victim had tried to contact law enforcement because of different incidences that allegedly involved the suspect in this case who's still at large. Right? So when you hear about these things and you hear about the family complaining that they never got an adequate response or you, you see these things where these people get drunk and shoot people with slingshots, they war- run around with machetes, there was a dude walking an EPAN with a machete on the side of the road just the other day. And it's like nobody even cares. They look at it and they're like, oh, shh. And you go home and you lock the door. Right? Where's our public safety chair on this? It's pretty useless. I don't know what they're doing at the legislature with public safety, but it's they're spending so much time investigating dirty cops that they don't even have time to take care of the real issues, which is protecting the freaking public. That's what the priority should be. Instead, we have a public safety chair who's so conflicted that he can't even do his damn job. And then we got to get the vice chair of public safety to form a whole other committee to investigate corruption in the police department. Meanwhile, we're out here getting slingshot and we're getting murdered. We're getting our houses broken into. People are getting arrested. Good cops are making the bus but the courts or the AGs are letting the people out back out on the street to do the same damn thing again. Police officers saw Machuo throw an object in the jungle, later found to be a slingshot. As officers followed, Machuo ran into the old roadway, allegedly ignoring them. When they caught up with him in the jungle, he took a fighting stance and came at an officer a taser was then used on Machuo to gain compliance. Court documents state he later apologized to officers and inside his car, this is exactly what I was telling you guys about, police found 25 half-inch rebar tips, Mm. 14 one-inch cuts of rebar, and 10 marbles, all in a desert-colored bag. And this guy, currently on pretrial release, where he was also placed on house arrest. He's facing charges of terrorizing as a third-degree felony with notice of commission on a felony. Oh, this is my favorite, bro. Commission of a felony while on felony release. How many times have we seen that crap? How many times? Too many damn times. Sorry, I'm getting worked up here. You know... You know, it's like, where are our priorities when it comes to the public safety? I just feel like it's not a priority. It's not. It's like last on the list. And if you look out at the crime that's happening on this island, it's just crazy. And I feel like we're, you know, for the most part, being left to fend for ourselves. We've had to form neighborhood watch groups, right? People are out here buying security cameras, home security systems. Why? Why are you guys doing this stuff? Why do we have a neighborhood watch patrol? Why do you have to get cameras in here? Because we can't count on the police. It's tragic. It's egregious. It's criminal. It really is. Because the police, they want to help. But they don't decide how much money they get. They don't get to say, we're going to hire all these officers. You know what I mean? That's why, again, I just feel like it's not a priority. I mean, we don't even know how this ARP funding is going to get spent. I mean, is some of it hopefully going to go to shoring up these chronic, no pun intended, chronic shortages of police out there. Yeah, just go on KUAM.com and you guys will see there's just a bunch of crazy, crazy crime stories. Here's this one I was looking for. Uh, Meryl Bleschel allegedly punched pregnant woman, choked child. Accused of punching a pregnant woman in the stomach and choking a child, 38-year-old Merrill, facing several charges, including aggravated assault as a third-degree felony, family violence as a third-degree felony, child abuse as a misdemeanor, assault, and assault of an unborn child as a misdemeanor. 
According to court documents, police responded to a Dedito home at 1.30 in the morning on June 4th where the victim reported that she was assaulted. She was several weeks pregnant, uh, said she was having pain and bleeding that evening, but before being taken to the hospital by medics, she fought with the suspect who allegedly punched a 12-year-old in the face and squeezed his neck. And you got to wonder if this 12-year-old boy was trying to protect his mother. But later in the evening, a police were called to remove the suspect from the residence. According to court docs, he said he'd been drinking alcohol. Wow, big surprise. Um, and the suspect, court documents state, is also on probation for a case involving the second victim. Ah, boy, look at that. We just killed in half, a half hour reading stupid crime stories. From today. This is like on our website today. And it's just so, guys, it's frustrating, man. I feel for our people. We're like sitting ducks out here. You know, and you see it. You see people are reacting. I'm pretty sure firearm sales, freaking through the roof. I see it on my social media. Everybody now has got a gun. They're all shooting. Like I said, we're all doing things to protect ourselves because we cannot count on the government to protect us anymore. It's sad. They want to talk all this smack every election about public safety, this and that, blah, 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 blah. Watch. They're going to say the same crap next election. Right? You're going to see Pito Terlahi out here like, I did the most for you. You didn't do anything. Come on. You're going to hear it all over again next year. Same thing. Lou and Josh are going to be like, yeah, we did this, we did that. The senators are going to be like, oh, we did this, we did that. But we know. We know. It's 9.57. Well, let's take a quick break, guys, so I can... Uh, I gotta take my blood pressure meds <laughs> real quick. And we're back with more of the link next. Good morning. Uno Go, delivering meals from your favorite restaurants and more, including delivering sodas and adult beverages from the Bottle Shack. Visit uno-go.com or download the app today. Also follow them on Instagram and Facebook. The world of television is more exciting than ever. Don't miss a minute of special presentations from NBC on KUAM TV 8 or from CBS on KUAM TV 11. Every month, we'll bring you the fun and excitement of award shows and red carpet moments, special series presentations, and other great network programs. Brought to you locally by King's Restaurant, Ruby Tuesday Guam, Bud Light Seltzer, and Docomo Pacific. Giving you more reasons to tune in and turn on. Fall in love with TV again with the best from KUAM Communications. Looking for TV schedules, upcoming sports, or special presentations, or what you may have missed over the busy week you had? Well, look no further than KOAM Digital Digest. This weekly email newsletter puts all kinds of information in the hands of subscribers each and every week. Just subscribe, and we will make sure you keep up with your favorites and stay informed and entertained throughout it all. Go to KOAM.com, click on the newsletter tab, give us your email address, and you are all set. Brought to you in digital partnership with King's Restaurant and Ruby Tuesday Guam. It's the KOM Digital Digest, your weekly guide to the latest information and best entertainment on the stations and platforms of KUAM. KUAM Communications continues our perpetuation of our tomorrow culture, language, and heritage with features available to our listening and viewing audience, including streaming of tomorrow music 24 hours per day on Isla Digital Radio on KUAM.com and the KUAM News app. Tomorrow News Update, weekdays on the link and the KUAM News YouTube channel. Conversations about life in our tomorrow language podcast with Tosta Paco with Kin Conception. Seasonal specials, shows and other features highlighting the beauty of our language, culture, and history. It's a new era of our continued commitment to our tomorrow heritage. Isla, watch, listen, stream. Viva Isla! Good job today, Joe, sir. Jason, as always, stellar work, my friend. Good show. Everybody, please go register Enter a chance to win ten grand or a car or really valuable prizes. Visit right guam.com slash VAX. All right. Uh, your chance to win. They're doing a drawing. The first drawing, I believe, is next Wednesday. Next Wednesday at 721 in the morning. We're yep. going to bring that announcement for you. All right. Uh, good job today, guys. Viewers on KUAM TV, thank you so much for jamming with us. Uh, this has been another one 
The Link. Remember, we got your six with our primetime newscast with the KUAM uh, news, team, news team. My name is Chris. Esta. Adios.